I showed you that postcard, I'll show you again. They were stacked in bags of a thousand. And this is an original bag I have here. This is a bag from the Carson City Mint. You see here, this would have been a bag that these coins would have been stored in. A thousand coins in a bag like this, and then in a vault stacked nearly to the ceiling that I showed you in that postcard from 1909. So you can imagine, even though the coins were uncirculated, not that many of them would grade Mint State 64. I mean, remember, they were put in a bag like this, a thousand coins in a bag. These bags were shipped by wagons and trains from the Mint to the vaults at the Treasury Department. And, and I mean, like I said, think of how they were stored. And, you know, look at that postcard. The coins are stacked, you know, almost to the ceiling. Millions of coins were in those vaults originally before they were paid out. So it's a big deal to find a GSA Carson City dollar in the condition we have here today. Very choice, Mint State 64 condition. And let me give you an idea what these Carson City Morgans can go for in this beautiful condition. Here's an 1882 in Mint State 64, $1,450. And that one's not even from the GSA hoard. Here's an 1882 MS64. That one's only $950. That's a great price. I think maybe because the holder looks a little scratchy. Let's see, here's a 1883 CC MS64, $2,250 for that one. 1883 Carson City MS64, $1,995, just under $2,000. Here's another 1884 CC, MS64, $1,965. You get the idea. And most of those coins I show you aren't even in the GSA holders. This is a three coin set. The 1882, 1883, and 1884 Carson City struck Morgan Silver Dollars, the coins of the Wild West. each in that stunning grade of very choice Mint State 64 condition. Each one of these coins has a mintage of just around a million coins. I mean, that's almost unheard of in the Morgan series. Most coins had mintages in the tens of millions. These are some of the lowest mintages in the Morgan Silver Dollar series. Look at this, here, let me show you. 1921 Philadelphia, they made almost 45 million coins. You see all these coins with mintages over 20 million. This whole page is virtually all over 10 million. It's not until we get to the bottom here that we start to see mintages below 10 million. Here's page two here. All right, now we're under 10 million. You see as we go down, 8 million, 5 million, 4 million. We get to the bottom here, we're getting down to some lower mintages, three and a half million. Still no Carson City coins on this list. It's not until we get to this third page we start seeing these CC coins show up and it's down here that we see the 83, 84 and then the 1882 Carson City coins show up with mintages just a little over a million coins. And I have the 1882, 1883 and 1884 CCs because these coins represent such a great value in rare coins. These are some of the scarcest Morgans of all time. Carson City Morgan silver dollars. And look at these coins. They're so crisp, razor sharp strikes remarkable luster, Mint State 64. These coins are completely original, untouched. I mean, these have been in these holders since the 1970s. These coins were never touched by anyone in the world outside of government vaults, ever. The surfaces were never physically touched by anyone from the general public. Going all the way back to the day they were struck, over you know, almost 140 years of existence for these coins. And this set won't cost you $5,000 like you see other dealers offering these coins for. Those prices, a lot of those weren't even in these original government holders. Those coins I showed you can't be tied to the GSA hoard like these coins I have for you today. It's not even gonna cost you $4,000. That would be a very fair price for a rare coin collection of this magnitude. 3,000 would be a fantastic price, but that wouldn't be based on my cost. And I got a fantastic deal on these Carson City Morgan dollars. Today, you can acquire this set of the 1882 
1883 and 1884 Morgan Silver Dollars in the original GSA holders certified by NGC in Mint State 64 condition for just $2,295. We even have a two pay option. Just put half down now, $1,147.50. We will store these treasures for you in our vault until you just pay that balance in 30 days. And then this iconic silver set of the Wild West will be shipped out to you. This is history. These are some of the rarest Morgan dollars struck at the most famous mint, the Carson City Mint, synonymous with the Wild West. This grand mint that tells the story of Americans moving westward to strike it rich, mining silver from that famous Comstock load. The first major silver discovery in the US and one of the largest silver discoveries in history. So much silver was mined during this time that the US government passed laws to strike silver dollars from the silver being mined in the Comstock load. So it's because of the Comstock load and that silver boom that the Carson City Mint was built. And it's actually the reason that the Morgan silver dollar was struck in the first place. The rarity of these coins is unparalleled. From 1878 to 1893, there weren't even 14 million Morgan dollars struck at the Carson City Mint. There were only about a million each of these 1882, 1883, and 1884 Carson City dollars produced ranking these among the rarest in the Morgan series. These coins were instant rarities right off the bat. I mean, with mintages that low, these are difficult to find in any condition. And to find them still in those original GSA holders, I mean, that's harder today than ever. Because back actually in the 1970s and 80s and the 90s, a lot of collectors and dealers actually broke these coins out of these holders. Some of them felt the holders were too large and bulky to conveniently store them. Other people want to put them in their coin albums back in, you know, when people stored coins that way in their albums. And then with the advent of PCGS and NGC coin grading services in the mid 1980s, still more of the coins were cracked out of their holders to be submitted to the third party grading services in hopes that they'd get a very high grade that would increase the value of the coins. So regardless of why the coins were removed from their government holders. So many of them were. So many of these coins were stripped of their GSA pedigree. A part of the history was just completely erased when these coins were removed from those holders. It wasn't until 2003 that NGC innovated a way to certify Morgan silver dollars that were still mounted in the original GSA holders. But by that time, so many of them had already been stripped of that pedigree. So on top of the absolute rarity of these coins, these are among the only ones to remain in their original government holders. In spectacular, mint state 64 condition. And they're only $2,295. Two payments of $1,147.50. We're talking about the 1882 CC, the 1883 CC and the 1884 CC Morgan silver dollars. These are legendary coins. These are coins that were nothing more than a myth until the 1970s. Numismatic experts were all but certain that these coins no longer existed. But these legendary silver dollars of the Wild West, against all odds, were resurrected in this GSA hoard. And the coins I have here are some of the few that remain in their original government holders. The most highly demanded way to collect Carson City Morgans is in their original GSA holders. But so many of these coins were broken out of these holders in the 1970s up until the early 2000s. Thousands of coins forever stripped of their legendary pedigree. And that is why coins like the ones I have right here are so important and why they are such highly valued and treasured pieces of numismatic history. The highest grade for an 82cc from NGC in a GSA holder is a Mint State 67 plus. Only two of those have ever been graded. And today you see those coins going for over $40,000. In Mint State 67, 
only 26 were graded. Just last year, an example sold for $11,400. I mean, you know how much a coin in that grade is going for today? About $18,000. And that's not even in a GSA holder. Here, look, let me show you. Here's one today, not even in a GSA holder. This coin's being offered at just under $18,000. You talk about these greatest rarities. They're, they're unattainable. They exist in such small quantities, they're already locked up in coin collections. So take advantage of the opportunity to own these very choice, uncirculated, famous Carson City Silver Dollars in their original GSA holders while you still can. Just $2,295, that's not each. That is for all three coins. This is the time to take advantage of this opportunity to own these Carson City Morgan silver dollars. It is so vital to get these coins while you still can. The longer you wait, the fewer of these coins are on the market. That's why you see these huge price jumps on coins in Mint State 67. The more collectors that join the market, the more coins leave the market. And the Mint is not producing more of these coins. This entire hoard of these coins was released nearly 50 years ago. There are not more of these being found. It is so crucial to jump in on this opportunity while you still can. This collection of three Carson City Morgan dollars, the 1882, 1883, and 1884 CC, in very choice, Mint State 64 condition, is becoming one of the hardest collections to put together. Please take advantage of this unique numismatic opportunity. Each coin in its original GSA government holder, straight from that GSA hoard, most important silver dollar hoard in history, the hoard that brought these Carson City Morgan silver dollars from the Wild West to the hands of collectors. This is our history, everyone. This tells the story of our forefathers traveling westward to expand our nation to make ends meet, to support their families, to build a future. Make this set a family heirloom. Make it part of your family's future. Make these rare and historic coins part of your legacy. Please, the time to acquire this set is right now. All right, Annie up, everyone. One dollar. Pass. You're gonna pass, Stitch, Coach Mary? Hey, I know when to lay him down. All right. How about you, Jack? I'll open up with one dollar. Hmm. An 1897 Morgan. Not bad, Jack. That's too rich for my blood. But I'm gonna raise you a 1902 Morgan. What do you think of that? Okay, I'll raise you an 1887 S and a 1904 P. Ha! You ain't nothing but a sissy boy. I'm gonna raise you an 1888 SAU and an 1891 CC Spittin' Eagle. Mm -hmm. I raise you an 1878 seven over eight tail feathers and two 1899 peas. You call that a raise bootlicker? Well, I'm gonna raise you three 
1879 cc Morgan dollars in gem condition. Now, what do you think of that? I got a full house, aces high. Now, let me see your cards, Jack. What do you got? Four jacks. <gasps> Four jacks! Let me see them! Not bad, Jack. That's a darn impressive hand, if I do say so. If you want a one-of-a-kind piece of United States history that has never been seen before, this is your day. These are historic, first ever coins of their kind produced by the US Mint. This is a complete six coin set of 2023 Morgan and Peace silver dollars, all in perfect 70 condition. These coins are flawless. These coins are pristine. It does not get any better than this. And these are among the first coins from either series to ever grade in perfect 70 condition. Four of the examples in this set are first ever examples produced by the US Mint. The revival of the Morgan and Peace Dollar Series, this goes back to 2021, when 45th President of the United States, Donald Trump, signed the 1921 Silver Dollar Coin Anniversary Act reviving the two most popular silver dollars ever produced in U.S. history. The Morgan dollar, 100 years after its mintage ended in 1921, and the Peace dollar 100 years after its mintage started in 1921. The demand for these 2021 Morgan and Peace silver dollars was off the charts. This was big news. And to make it even better, these coins were produced in tiny numbers. And because of the cutting edge technology the US Mint uses today, some of these coins are available for the first time ever in perfect Mint State 70 condition. In 2022, demand for the Morgan and Peace silver dollars was so high, the US Mint couldn't even supply them. Wasn't possible at that time given the resources available. But there was hope because the US Mint announced that there would indeed be 2023 Morgan and Peace Silver Dollars. After a year long hiatus from producing these Morgan and Peace Silver Dollars, the US Mint stepped it up and they took it to a level I never imagined. These coins are, this is so special. The 2021 coins were already something special. First ever MS70 example, some of the lowest mintages in their series. But in 2023, they really raised the bar. The U.S. Mint released the first ever Morgan and Peace Silver Dollars ever struck in reverse proof. Reverse proofs. These stunning classic designs have never been seen with this innovative strike. These Morgan and Peace Silver Dollars, they look better than ever. And like those 2021 examples, they're available in perfect 70 condition. But that's not all the U.S. Mint did. They also released proof examples of each of the Morgan and the Peace Silver Dollars. And for the first time ever, there's coins grading in proof 70 ultra cameo condition. Never until this release were there Morgan Dollars in proof 70 ultra cameo condition. Never until this release was a Peace Dollar ever struck with cameo contrast in any condition, let alone in perfect proof 70 ultra cameo condition like these coins here. And of course, the 2023 examples for the Mint State coin, those are Mint State 70 condition. The six coin sets I have here for you today contain all six of these coins. And each coin in this set ranks among the lowest mintages of each series. This is history, everybody. There has never before, since the Mint was created in 1792, been a reverse proof Morgan or a reverse proof Peace Silver Dollar, ever. Now remember, the Mint normally strikes coins based on demand. If they have orders for 10 million coins, they make 10 million coins. But they limited the mintages of these coins, creating 
instant rarities. They could have easily made millions of these coins. If they only made a million of these coins, I would have been ecstatic. That would have been great. I mean, even at one million coins, these would have been some of the rarest Morgan and Peace silver dollars ever made. But only 250,000 of these reverse proof Morgan and Peace silver dollars are being released. There are almost 600 times more collectors than there are of these 2023 reverse proof Morgan and Peace silver dollars. And that's not even taking into account how few of these coins will grade a perfect 70 grade. Very few of these coins are gonna end up in these 70 holders. I mean, think about that. 10, 20 years down the line from now, you're gonna thank yourself for buying this set. This is gonna be one of the best decisions you've ever made. There won't be more of these 2023 Morgan and Peace silver dollar sets being made. This is it. And this is a set that even right now can't meet demand. And remember those 2021 coins I mentioned earlier? Let me show you what happened to the value of those coins over the past two years. We were originally offering those sets. Here's an invoice from October of 2021. We were selling for $2,695. That person bought two sets. Here's another one here, $2,695. Today, these sets that were $26.95, these sets are selling for $5,000 or more from November of 2023, $4,995. In two years, the value of those sets has practically doubled. Look what other people are offering those sets for. We're at $49.95, but look, here's some other dealers. Here's $54.95, $5,500. $6,000. I mean, these are five to $6,000 sets today. And those coins from 2021, those were all mint state coins. These 2023 coins really raised the bar. Even after all the hype and excitement from the 2021 coins, how beloved they've become, these 2023 coins shook the numismatic world. You're not just getting mint state coins in perfect condition anymore. You're also getting the first ever reverse proof Morgan and Peace silver dollars to ever be produced. Not just 70, but any grade. The first Morgan and Peace dollars ever to be graded in perfect proof 70 ultra cameo. The first time ever. If these sets were being offered for $2,000, I'd be saying you'd be getting a great deal. We could sell these sets like hotcakes. But that just is not our philosophy here at Rare Collectibles TV. I don't offer you coins based on what the market will bear. I offer you rarities based on my cost. These are such historic coins. I hope everyone watching here today is able to acquire one of these sets. So today, for a limited time, I can offer this complete six coin set, 2023 Morgan and Peace silver dollar six coin set for just $1,395. $1,395, that is less than $250 a coin. As a matter of fact, that's just $233 a coin. And each of these coins has the distinguished first day of issue pedigree. Call in now. This is an offer that will not last long. Like I said, we could have priced these at 2,000 or somewhere close to that, but no, we wanted to make sure every collector is able to get in on this offer. $1,395. We even have a two pay option, two payments, just $697.50. Just make one payment now, Make that second payment in 30 days. We'll hold these coins in our vault and ship them out once we get that final payment. These coins are so spectacular. These reverse proof Morgan and Peace Silver dollars are going to go down in history. Among the most significant coins the US Mint has ever made. A first ever in US Mint history. Since 1792, when the mint was established, there has never been a single Morgan or Peace dollar struck in reverse proof. These are treated in such a special way, gives them this stunning, unique finish. These coins are like nothing you've ever seen before. I've never seen anything like this. On a reverse proof coin, you get frosted fields and mirrored devices. It's just the opposite of a traditional brilliant proof coin. It is such a beautiful finish and it is so rarely used on coins. 
this finish really accentuates the classic beauty of the Morgan and Peace dollar designs. And these coins are the limiting factor to building these complete sets of six. The mintage of just 250,000 coins. And reverse proof coins are really hard to get in perfect 70 condition. Perfect 70 is very hard for reverse proofs because the highest points on the coins are mirrored. And these mirrored surfaces are incredibly fragile. So they're so much more susceptible to getting minor damage, flaws, imperfections. So who knows how many of these coins will ever grade in 70. So you can imagine just how few of these sets it's gonna be possible to make. And then of course, besides those reverse proofs, we have the proof coins. When it comes to the proof Morgan dollars, the standard proofs, the Morgan dollars and peace dollars of that classic era, almost none were produced in that original era. Proof coins are coins that are struck specially for collectors. Proof coins in earlier times were, these were only struck for kings and dignitaries. These coins are struck multiple times under higher pressure to ensure they are of the highest quality possible. Proof coins are the state of the art. They are the highest quality the mint can produce given the technology of the day. Now let me show you just how rare proof Morgan dollars from that classic era are. They are extremely rare. And that original era for the Morgan dollar from 1870 to 1921, about 656, almost 657 million Morgan dollars were struck. They made 23,499 proof Morgans. So the percentage of proof Morgans, 0.004%, not 4%, not 0.4%, not even 0 0.04, 0.004% of all Morgan dollars struck were proofs. When you see a proof coin, they are so rare. Here's a famous key date proof Morgan dollar. This is the 1895 proof 67 plus cameo. And this is public record. So for almost 270,000 for that proof Morgan. So you get the idea of the rarity, the value, the demand for these proof Morgan dollars. So when you see a Proof Morgan silver dollar, you know it is an incredible rarity because they were struck on so few occasions, such limited numbers. And these are the first examples ever to be graded in Proof 70, ultra cameo condition. I mean, this is true numismatic artistry. I mean, look at the cameo contrast on these coins. Those bright, frosted designs, those deep mirrored fields. This is like nothing that the US Mint has ever produced before. It gets even better because proof peace silver dollars are even rarer than proof Morgans. They were only struck in proof for two years, 1921 and 1922. And when it comes to the peace dollar, there's only about 20 proof examples known to exist. We're talking about a series with about 190 million coins struck and just about 20 proofs are known to exist. And none of those proofs, not a one, has cameo contrast like these 2023 coins. This is the first time a peace dollar has ever had cameo contrast, ever had those frosted designs, those mirrored fields. This is a fantasy come true. Let me show you from the vintage era. Here's one of the few proof peace dollars that exists. This is called a matte proof, so it does not have those cameo mirrored surfaces. This coin sold for $329,000 almost 10 years ago. And it is not an ultra cameo like the coins we have here today. When it comes to Morgan and Peace silver dollars from that classic era, meaning coins from 1878 to 1921 for the Morgans and 1921, 1935 for the Peace dollars, there are a grand total of zero examples graded in mint state 70. I mean, back in the day, coins like this were struck for commerce. These were made to be used. When the original Morgan Peace dollars were struck, late 1880s through the early 1900s, they were produced in mass for public circulation. They'd be struck, they'd be ejected from the dies, dumped into bins where they'd collide with each other before going through counting machines, thrown into bags, and shipped across the country, rattling away, abrading with each other on trains. There were never any Mint State 70 Morgan or Peace silver dollars until now. That's why these 2023 coins are so special. There are no Mint State 70s in that classic era. When we compare these 2023 Mint State Morgan and Peace silver dollars 
to the classic series, the original era, we're talking about some incredible low mintage rarities. Coins with mintages of just 275,000 coins. That's it. These easily rank among the rarest in the series. We go back and look at that original era for the Mint State series. Look at this. This whole first page are mintages above 10 million until we get to the bottom. 1896, we finally dip below 10 million coins. Second page here, 1878 San Francisco. Again, a hair under 10 million of those struck. Get down this page, we're still above 5 million. The 96S, we finally hit 5 million on the dot. Third page of Morgan's, 96.0, you're under 5 million here just 1.3 million for that 92 cc. Now the last page, this is where we get to the very, very rare Morgans. Starting with that 94S, just 1.26 million coins struck. Then you see our 2023. The Mint State 2023, they only made 275,000. Coins with lower mintages in here, the 93S, a very famous key date to the Morgan series. Only 100,000 of those coins made, and it is a very famous key date. Let me show you an example. One of the finest known examples of the 93S sold for $600,000. This is a coin in mint state 65. We've been talking about how all these coins are graded perfect 70. Well, what does that mean? In numismatics, we grade coins using the Sheldon scale. It's a 70 point scale that we use to determine the quality of a coin. The lowest coins on that scale would grade a one. You can hardly even recognize the coin. But then there's a 70, and a 70 is the highest possible grade. And that means it is a flawless coin. When it comes to those antique Morgan and Peace dollars, there's never been a coin graded in a perfect 70 condition. It's so rare to get coins above 65, but there's never ever been a perfect 70. That's what is so special about these coins I have here today. These 2023 Morgan and Peace silver dollars produced by the US Mint are in perfect 70 condition. To get that perfect 70 grade, it is a very rigorous process. A grader at NGC's grading laboratory, they'll inspect that coin. They'll look at the coin, and if it looks flawless to the naked eye, then they set it aside. Then the NGC graders go back and they scrutinize that coin one more time, but this time under five times magnification. And if they still can't find any flaws, there's still no flaws on that coin, only then is it given the illustrious, perfect grade of 70. This set gives you some of the only Morgan and Peace silver dollars to ever grade in perfect 70 condition. This set gives you some of the only Morgan and Peace silver dollars to ever grade in mint state 70 condition. The only Morgan silver dollar to ever grade in proof 70 ultra cameo condition. The only Peace silver dollar to ever grade in proof 70 ultra cameo condition. As a matter of fact, it's the only Peace dollar in any grade to exhibit that beautiful cameo contrast we see on that coin. And the first ever, first time ever in history. Reverse proof Morgan and reverse proof Peace Silver Dollars, both in perfect, flawless 70 condition. All with first day of issue pedigrees. Why wouldn't you take advantage of this opportunity right now? And all for less than $233 a coin. If you're seeing this, you're going to be one of the lucky few to acquire one of the most important U.S. Mint coin releases of all time. I mean, remember what happened to those coins? Those 2021 coins? We were selling those 2021 sets in 2021, $26.95 a set. Now we're selling them $4,995 a set. There's other dealers selling them, $5,500, $6,000. Please take advantage of this opportunity, everyone. This is U.S. history. This is numismatic history. This is the story of our country. This is a set that I think everyone in America should own, whether you collect coins or not. But so few of these exist, especially in perfect 70 condition. This is a dream come true. Less than $233 a coin. This is simply the greatest event the US Mint has offered in decades. These are coins that truly represent our great country. These are examples that you wanna keep in your family. Don't 
You want historic rarities like this to pass on to your kids and grandkids. I know I do. Make these coins part of your legacy. Every collector is interested in a different facet of collecting. What is so special about our private advisory coin team is that they get to know you. They learn about your interests and implement a plan to build your dream collection. When hot new items come in that suit your collection, our advisors will reach out to you and give you first access to those coins. We've always felt that every collector deserves a service like this, regardless of budget. So we decided to make PACT a completely complimentary service. To build the coin collection of your dreams and access your personal numismatic concierge service, call our private advisory coin team at 1-800-778-0624. That's 1-800-778-0624. I am thrilled to be able to offer you the most beautiful coin ever created by the U.S. Mint. And look, I know that beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but when you see this coin, I think most of you are gonna agree with me because as a matter of fact, when asked, most collectors and numismatists will tell you that the most beautiful coin of all time is the St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle. And this coin was the crowning achievement of 26th President Theodore Roosevelt, and the greatest artist of the day, Augustus St. Gaudens. And you see, when Roosevelt became president, the redesigning of America's coinage became his personal mission. And this was a, a pet project, if you will. And this mission grew into what we now call the Renaissance of American coinage. And this era began with President Theodore Roosevelt's famous letter to Secretary of Treasury Leslie Shaw on December 27, 1904. And the letter blatantly states, I think our coinage is artistically of atrocious hideousness. Would it be possible, without asking permission of Congress, to employ a man like St. Gaudens to give us a coinage that would have some beauty? The redesigning of America's coinage was an absolute necessity for President Roosevelt because he believed that a country's coinage represented its status. With the United States stepping into its role as an international powerhouse, Roosevelt knew that our coinage needed to reflect that fact. The St. Gaudens Double Eagle is more than just a beautiful coin design. It is a symbol representative of America's transition from a fledgling democracy to a global superpower. And Roosevelt's critique of U.S. coinage was heavily influenced by his infatuation with the extremely high relief coins of the ancient Greeks. To President Roosevelt, the coins of the Greeks were not just a means to an end. They were stunning pieces of art that were imprinted with the history of their people. If coins from thousands of years ago could display such a high caliber of artistry and storytelling, then why couldn't the coinage of the United States of America do the same in the modern era? To create a work that would parallel the artistry of the Greeks, Roosevelt suggested an extremely high relief design with a high rim to protect its intricate details. Augustus St. Gaudens wholeheartedly agreed. And after convincing Shaw that this high relief design was plausible, Roosevelt wrote to St. Gaudens saying that Shaw likely thinks him a crack-brained lunatic on the subject. <laughs> but regardless, the design was approved. The design that the legendary sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens produced for Roosevelt marked the first time in American history that a coin was designed by a contracted artist instead of a US government employee. And it's no coincidence that the resulting coin is now known as the most beautiful piece of US coinage to ever be struck. A coin so beautiful that it inspired the American coin renaissance. 
a time period in which every US coin was redesigned in a little over a decade. Creating this iconic coin was not a simple feat, however. In fact, it seemed that every step of the way, President Theodore Roosevelt and Augustus St. Gaudens were met with barricade after barricade. For one, the once healthy Augustus St. Gaudens fell tragically ill and began to suffer from cancer in 1906, the year before the double eagle would first be struck. This caused numerous complications in the production of the coin. And St. Gaudens' health was not the only obstacle that posed a dilemma for the production of his double eagle. Charles Barber, sixth chief engraver of the US Mint, fervently objected to the design's creation as its ultra high relief would be nearly impossible to coin efficiently. And Barber famously declared that he was just as certain that the relief of St. Gaudens Eagle will never coin as he was certain that the sun will rise each morning. In the end, the ultra high relief design was attempted in 1907, but proved so immensely difficult to strike that the opposition by Barber ultimately prevailed and the relief of the St. Gaudens Double Eagle was drastically lowered. But not before about 20 ultra high relief examples were made. And today, those extremely high or ultra high relief coins sell for millions of dollars. And you can see why. Look at how dramatic this coin is. Here's an example of one. You can see just how dramatic that is, how high the design is raised from the fields of that coin. It has a very raised rim and it's kind of dished out and you see Lady Liberty there in the center rising so high above those fields in the background. And again, the reverse, same thing. You have those deeply concave fields with that very high relief, that ultra high relief of that eagle in the center. It is just such a spectacular coin. Now, believe it or not, there was actually a version even more dramatic than the ultra high relief variety. The coin I show you was struck on a planchet the same size as the normal $20 double eagle. But a planchet that size isn't thick enough to truly be ultra high relief. You see, originally, experimental pieces were made with a relief so high that they were struck on a smaller diameter, but much thicker planchet. They're actually the same diameter as a $10 coin, but with double the thickness. And when these double thick coins were produced, the Mint quickly received requests from art museums around the country who wanted examples for their collections. But their requests were flatly denied. Because as difficult as it was to produce these coins, there was a much bigger problem. At the time, the coin diameters were fixed by law. So it would actually be illegal for any of these smaller diameter, double thick, ultra high relief coins to be released by the Mint. And Mint director Frank Leach found out that Mint employees had produced 15 of these double thick coins for review. When he found that out, he quickly had all of the coins gathered for destruction before any might have a chance to escape from Mint custody. And Leach promptly had all of those coins melted. But thankfully, he did spare two coins from the melting pot which were delivered to the US Mint coin collection. And these are the only two survivors of the ultimate St. Gaudens design. And today these two coins are among the crown jewels of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC. And that means these examples are unattainable. You couldn't get one for all the money in the world. I mean, these coins are priceless. These are true sculptures. Precious works of fine art. So St. Gaudens and Roosevelt's true vision of an ultra high relief coin for the people was never fully realized. But that time is over. Because in 2009, that vision was finally brought to life by the US Mint. Mint director Ed Moy announced its release by discussing the vision of Augusta St. Gaudens and the art of the high relief and firmly stating that this time, we are going to finish what was started in 1907.
And the coins right here are the 2009 Ultra High Relief St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagles. This is the St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle in its intended double thick, ultra high relief format. The pinnacle of numismatic artistry. The ultra high relief St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle is finally attainable and it is in absolutely flawless mint state 70 condition the highest grade a coin can receive what you see here is the original vision of the most beautiful american coin design produced in our country's history and the coins i have here are perfect 70 quality mint state 70 and these were created using the original plaster models sculpted by St. Gaudens himself. The models used for those two priceless ultra high relief specimens in the Smithsonian Institution. These coins are accurate down to the most minute details because of the cutting edge technology, including digital mapping. These coins were created with tolerances of one one hundred thousandth of an inch. But despite these technical advances, it's still incredibly difficult to produce ultra high relief coins. These 2009 ultra high relief coins represent the first and only time in American history that the double thick ultra high relief St. Gaudens design has been made available to the public. And considering how difficult it is to produce ultra high relief coinage, even today, I don't see the US Mint attempting this again anytime soon. Now the US Mint didn't even attempt to create another ultra high relief coin after 1907 until this coin in 2009, over a hundred years. With this 2009 ultra high relief St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle, the first time they tried it again. And even with all the modern mint technology, there was no guarantee that the mint could put an ultra high relief into production. And in the end, they'd only produce 114,000 of these coins. But it was so impractical, it took so much effort to produce these 2009 ultra high relief double eagles that the US Mint produced these only for one year. This is a one year only issue, a single year issue. Just 114,000 made, that was it. I mean, you can compare that to a one ounce American gold eagle there's about 23 million of those coins that exist. On average, they make about 602,000 of those every year. And remember, these examples are in flawless Mint State 70 condition. Mint State 70, perfection. That is the highest grade that a coin can receive. When you look at examples in Mint State 70 condition, that is, there's so few of them. Here, let me show you for this issue how few of these coins have graded in a perfect Mint State 70 condition. Even with all of the cutting edge technology of the Mint, so few of these coins end up being completely flawless, perfect 70. As a matter of fact, it's only 18% of the coins that have been certified in flawless Mint State 70 condition. Now let me show you those original coins, because like I said, besides those two double thick planchet ultra high reliefs. There were about 20 of the regular diameter high reliefs that were made. And those coins today are so rare, so important, so in demand. This is what they bring. Here's one that sold recently at auction for over $4.3 million for one of the original ultra high relief coins. Now even when they lowered the relief, they made then what they call just a regular high relief. Those coins are extremely elusive in the highest grades. Here's one that sold for $336,000. Even a damaged one is close to $20,000. Here's one that's being offered for $17,800. That coin is damaged, it's cleaned. So just to give you an idea of what the normal high relief, not even an ultra high relief, just the regular high relief, the much more lowered version, can bring. Now let me show you the coins I have today. These 2009 coins, these coins can bring quite a bit elsewhere. When you look, actually there were a few of the earliest strikes that came out with a proof-like finish. 
There's one that brought $17,600. Here's one that was over $21,000 because it not only was a 70, but it had a proof-like finish. Here's an MS-70 with a star designation brought over $14,000 at auction. And then the MS-70 coins, the coins I have today, even without a designation, here's one, $5,900 that coin's being offered for, and here's one. This is exactly the coin I have to hear today, the 2009 Ultra High Relief Mint State 70 grade. Here's one that brought $5,640 at auction. Today I have these one of a kind, 2009 Ultra High Relief St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagles. The only examples that you could possibly acquire struck on that double thick planchet the same way as it was originally envisioned, that ultra high relief format, in perfect mint state 70 condition, the catalyst of the renaissance of American coinage. It's not gonna cost you millions of dollars like those other ultra high relief coins. It's not even gonna cost you $6,5500 that you're seeing these coins offered elsewhere. 5500 would be a phenomenal price. But my philosophy here at Rare Collectibles TV is to find you the best deals possible and give you guys a price based on my cost. When I get a deal, I make sure to pass those savings on to you. So today, while supplies last, you can acquire the 2009 Ultra High Relief St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle, the double thick planchet in perfect mint state 70 condition for just $4,695. We even have a convenient three payment plan. Just put down a third now, $1,565 today. We will lock one of these treasures in our vault for you. Then you just make those next two payments in the following 60 days. We will ship this iconic gold treasure to you. Now, some of the earliest coins struck actually had proof-like finishes. I showed you a couple of comps. Those are extremely rare. I'm always looking for those. They're so rare. Normally, I'm lucky if I find one or two at a time. If you're interested in one of those, let your operator know. We'll see what we can do. We might have some. I'm always trying to find one or two. Now, I keep talking about how beautiful this design is, but I also want you to know about what this represents because this isn't just a beautiful coin design. It truly represents American values. You see Lady Liberty standing tall, marching forward, draped in her Greco-Roman gown. And that gown represents Western values. It symbolizes the concepts of liberty and democracy that started in Greece and Rome. And then you look at her hands, she's carrying that torch. And that torch represents enlightenment. She has that out in front of her. And there's an olive branch representing peace right beside her. And all of these elements come together to mean something simple. But it's something that is tied to the fabric of our nation. And it means that when enlightenment leads the way for liberty, peace will soon follow. So if you look closely down at the left-hand corner, something a lot of people don't notice about this coin, but you actually see the US Capitol building far behind liberty. And this means liberty's already visited the United States represented by that Capitol building. And now she's marching out towards the viewer and towards the rest of the world. Now the date on this coin is expressed in Roman numerals too. And that's just like the original 1907 coins. And it's a nod to the ancient Greek and Roman works that served as an inspiration for this coin. Then you look at the reverse of this coin and you see that eagle, it's a young eagle flying upward. And behind that eagle are the rays of the rising sun. This young eagle represents America in this image because we're a very young country at the time. And that rising sun combined with that upward trajectory of flight symbolizes America's continuous rise to power. And this stunning coin was struck on a double thick planchet for the most visually dramatic effect, just as envisioned by Theodore Roosevelt and Augustus St. Gaudens achieved using the original plaster models that were created by Augustus St. Gaudens himself in 1907. This is a monumental piece of art and it is in perfect mint state 70 condition. You might be wondering 
what a perfect grade of 70 means. Well, in numismatics, we grade coins using what's known as the Sheldon scale. It's a 70 point scale, lowest quality coins would grade a one. And that's a coin you can hardly even read what it says on the coin, so worn. The highest quality coins, the best coins, would grade a 60 or better. This is what we would call uncirculated or mint state. For a coin to grade in a 70, it is a very rigorous process. A grader at NGC or PCGS's grading lab, they'll take a look at that coin, and if it appears flawless to the naked eye, then they set it aside. Then the NGC or PCGS graders, they'll go back. They'll look at that coin one more time, but this time under five times magnification. And if there's still no flaws, only then is it given that illustrious perfect grade of a 70. Now over time, the St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle has undeniably earned the title of America's most beautiful coin. Unfortunately, due to the limits of primitive minting technology, St. God's original concept was never truly brought to life by the U.S. Mint. That means that among the millions of people who've deemed this coin to be the finest artwork of American numismatics, it's been virtually impossible for them to ever see an ultra high relief, let alone to own one. Until now, with this 2009 ultra high relief St. God's Gold Double Eagle, brought to life using the original models of those priceless, ultra high relief saints in the Smithsonian Institution. These examples are true national treasures. And despite the advancement in minting technology, ultra high relief examples like you see here are still very difficult to produce. So few of these coins were produced. They were released 15 years ago. And a large portion of these coins are tied up in collections. I rarely find enough of these to come up and make a presentation on television. Each of these examples I have right now are in absolutely flawless. Mint state 70 condition. The highest grade a coin could possibly receive. These 2009 ultra high relief coins represent the first and only time in American history that the original ultra high relief St. Gaudens design in that double thick format has ever been made available to the public. So please take advantage of this opportunity while it lasts. To quote former Mint director, the Honorable Ed Moy, Americans will want to own this coin not only for its very high relief, but for its rarity, its beauty, and its history. This coin here, this is our heritage. This is our American culture. This is the story of how American numismatics became what it is today. These are coins that should be in every collection and they are very limited right now. Buy one for your kids, buy one for your grandkids. These are coins that you'll be so happy that you acquire. If you can get more than one, please do it. Make these coins part of your legacy. Please don't miss out. Ladies and gentlemen, what I have here is the most underrated, under the radar set that exists in today's coin market. This is a set of coins that if you put them away right now, you will look back in 10 years and you will think this is one of the best decisions of your life. This is your opportunity to get in at today's ground floor price. Just take a look. Look at these coins. The most beautiful half dollar ever produced in American history. The Walking Liberty half dollar. And right now, I have a very limited number of complete 
20 coin Walking Liberty half dollar short sets, or as I like to call them, victory sets, in the phenomenal grade of gem, Mint State 65. For those of you who collect American Silver Eagles, maybe, you'll recognize this design because in 1986, this design was resurrected as the American dollar coin. Now, whether or not you collect American Silver Eagles yet, doesn't matter. I have a real treat for you because this is simply the most significant design of the 20th century. This is a historic set right here that this is second to none. This set that I have here beginning in 1941 and ending in 1947, the final year that the Walking Liberty Half Dollar was struck. Now, historically speaking, 1941 was a year that changed the world. 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor caused the U.S. to join World War II, instantly changing the tide of the war, giving the Allies the undeniable advantage. Four years later, 1945, America and the Allied powers were victorious, restoring peace and justice to the world. So the Walking Liberty Half Dollar is a coin whose significance is marked in so many ways. It's a coin that commemorates those who fought in World War II. It's a coin that asserts America's power and influence. And it's a coin that celebrates America's role in ending the carnage of that global conflict. Now, designed by Adolf A. Weinman. This coin showcases the pinnacle, the pinnacle of American numismatic artistry. And that's because its genesis was during what's called the Renaissance of American coinage. This is a period of time where the greatest American artists, greatest American artists to live, were commissioned to redesign the entirety of America's coinage. When you see these walking Liberty half dollars, they are the epitome, the epitome of that beauty and artistry. I mean, this is the best of the best, especially when you see these coins in the grade we have here. Absolutely stunning. Mint state 65 condition, gem condition. I mean, this is an extraordinary grade for coins of this vintage. These are coins from the 1940s. These Walking Liberty sets represent some of the only examples of this coin series to survive in this phenomenal grade. Let me give you a little bit of background here about that renaissance of American coinage I was just talking about. This is a movement that was really inspired and championed by President Theodore Roosevelt in the early 1900s. He believed that America was the greatest country in the world and that our coinage needed to represent that. He also believed that truly beautiful art should be accessible to every single American. Everybody should have access to beauty and beautiful art. So what he did was he reached out to the Secretary of Treasury, Leslie Shaw, with this famous letter. And it goes like this. He says, my dear Secretary Shaw, I think our coinage is artistically of atrocious hideousness. Would it be possible, without asking the permission of Congress, to employ a man like St. Gaudens to give us a coinage that would have some beauty? Sincerely yours, Theodore Roosevelt. I couldn't tell from that letter. President Roosevelt was not impressed with the nation's coinage at that time. He knew America was stepping into its role as a global superpower, and he wanted every aspect of American life to showcase that excellence. So Roosevelt went on to enlist the renowned artist Augustus St. Gaudens to redesign our coinage. But unfortunately, St. Gaudens was in failing health at the time. He was only able to redesign two of the coins before his untimely and tragic death. So the Mint started reaching out to other famed artists, the greatest artists of the time. And it was the legendary sculptor Adolf Weinman who designs not only this coin, not only the Walking Liberty Half Dollar, but also the Mercury Dime. And this is a man whose artwork is featured on the Jefferson Memorial in Washington, D.C. 
That's right. Adolph Wyman's work is right on the top of the Jefferson Memorial, right on the front, and right when you first walk up to it. His work's featured in the Smithsonian Institution. I mean, this is a world-class artist, and that's why it was such a big deal for him to redesign our coinage. And to this day, the Walking Liberty Half Dollar is considered the finest American coin ever produced by so many. I mean, it is a masterwork. It is beautiful. What we have here, this set, this is the most popular way to collect Walking Liberty Half Dollars. This is what was historically called the short set, but I like to call it the victory set. These are coins that were struck from 1941 to 1947. These are my favorite coins in this series because they represent America's involvement in World War II, ultimately that allied victory. That's why I like to call this the victory set, but also just because of the quality of these issues. Look at these coins, they are stunning. These are just jaw-dropping coins. The coins in these victory sets mark the United States of America's involvement in World War II. These are from that era, 1941. After the tragic attack on Pearl Harbor, America had no choice but to join the war effort and put an end to tyranny across the globe. And the very first coins in the set were struck in 1941, the same year that America joined the war. I mean, this is the perfect symbol of American justice and power. And this set offers all of the coins struck from 1941 to 1947, not just some of them. This is every single mint mark during those years. So you have Philadelphia, Denver, San Francisco. This means that every walking liberty half dollar struck during our campaign to bring peace to the world Every one from that era. Coins from 1941, memorializing Pearl Harbor and the U.S. entering the war. Coins from 1942, when the U.S. won the Battle of Midway. You know, showing Japan the strength and power of the American Navy. You know, we've got coins 1943, 1944, when General Eisenhower invaded Normandy on D-Day. Coins from 1945, celebrating the Allied victory. And, you know, so many more coins here, the different mints, mint marks. With the war raging throughout the world, at this time, most people didn't have the capability to put coins away. They weren't able to keep coins in pristine condition like these coins. This is so unusual for coins to survive like this. I mean, we're talking about truly hard times. I mean, there were shortages of food and other household goods. I mean, families would have to use ration books. I mean, people weren't saving coins to keep them in the finest possible condition. They were trying to survive. And that's a large part of the reason why these coins in this set that I have for you today are so rare and why so few of them survive. Let me show you what these coins typically look like. I mean, just to give you an idea, MS-65 is a big deal. Anything Mint State is a big deal, but let alone Mint State 65. That is an extremely high grade. Now, this is typical Walking Liberty half dollars I have here for you. This is what they look like. You know, this is just kind of what you find. If you're able to be lucky enough to find a Walking Liberty half dollar, this is what you generally are going to find coins in condition like this. It's very unusual to find anything even in, you know, you know, here's, here's a, here's a really nice one. This is a really nice coin, but that's not even uncirculated. That's kind of like a, about uncirculated at best and maybe extremely fine, but I'd, I'd probably say that's probably about uncirculated right there. But to find an uncirculated coin, I mean, there's definitely none in here. And keep in mind, these are Mint State 65. That's not just the base level for uncirculated. These are gem. You know, they're not just uncirculated. They're not just choice uncirculated. These are gem uncirculated coins that I've been able to put together in these sets. I mean, this is a huge opportunity. So let me, let me walk you through some of these individual coins here so you can get an idea of just how rare they really are. So these are really rare. You're getting a walking Liberty half dollar from every mint that produced the walking Liberty half dollar from each year from 1941 to 1947. So that's a total of 20 coins. And let me show you how rare these coins are in mint state 65 condition. Now I have a chart here comparing them 
to some of those famous Carson City Morgan dollars. We all know how rare Carson City dollars are. If, if you've been collecting coins for a while, they're pretty renowned. Now look at the Walking Liberty half dollars in this set. In MS65, some of these very low populations, the 41S, less than 4,000, 42, just over 5,000, here's 4,200. You see a lot of very low ones. Even at the high points, less than 18,000 of that 1946D. But you compare it to these famous rarities from the Morgan series, the Carson City Mint. In MS65, most of those Carson Cities are actually more common than even the most common on this chart. I mean, some of these coins on here are about four times more rare than these famous rare Carson Cities. And you know how much some of these Carson Cities sell for in any condition, let alone Mint State 65 like we have here. Let me show you a couple. Here, look at this. Here's an 82cc in Mint State 65, same grade we have here. Sold for almost $2,000. And I, I don't know about that. It's not the greatest eye appeal coin, uh, you know, but still almost $2,000 for that example. Here's an 83cc. Here's a nice, that one looks like it does have nice eye appeal, bright white coin, but still almost $3,000. And here's an 84cc. 1750 1750 for the 84 cc actually that one's only an ms 63 that's only an ms 63 that's not even an ms 65 and that coin is over 1700 dollars so you get the idea these morgans are you know can be two three thousand dollar coins and these walkers we have every single one of these 20 coins is more rare than these coins here i mean you see how much they bring and some of these walkers can bring some big money too. Look at, here's a few. Here's a 1942S that's graded MS65. That's actually not by NGC or PCGS. The coins we have are all NGC and PCGS, the two most popular and widely accepted grading companies. This is a different company, but still $2,000 they're asking for that coin. Here's one that sold in auction, a 1944S. This is graded by PCGS, $1,840. So over $1,800. Here's a 1947 MS65. It's actually got a star, so it's you know it's premium quality coin. Still $920. Everyone, this is a set of 20 that I have here. This is a set of 20. You're looking at individual coins in this set that are being offered for thousands of dollars. I mean, just three Walking Liberty half dollars that I just showed you, they came to almost $5,000 for just three coins with comparable rarity, actually even rarer than the Carson City Mint Morgans I just showed you. Those three Carson Cities I showed you, those prices added up to over $6,500, and that's just three coins. Today, you can acquire this complete victory set of 20 coins, walking Liberty half dollars. That's 20 coins, all in Mint State 65 condition, gem quality, and it's not gonna cost you $6,000. I mean, it'd be a great price. $5,500 would be a phenomenal price for a 20 coin victory set in Mint State 65. $5,500, I'd say, see if you can buy two or three of these sets if you can swing it. But my pricing is based on my cost. And I managed to acquire a fantastic deal on these victory sets that I have here today. So for a limited time, while the supply lasts, while I can get these sets, I can offer you this complete Walking Liberty half dollar victory set, Mint State 65 condition for just $4,795. That is less than $240 per coin. Less than $240 a coin. You see these coins selling elsewhere for $900, $1,700, $1,900. Right now, less than $240 per coin. You can even use our two payment plan. Just put half down now, that's just $2,397.50. We will store one of these treasures, one of these victory sets in our vault for you. Just pay that balance in 30 days and we will ship your Walking Liberty victory set out to you. It's that easy. We want to make this as easy as possible, everyone, because these sets are hard to put together. Once I run out of this small group I put together, I don't know when we're going to have these again. So. 
I want to make this opportunity available to as many people as possible. If you're new to numismatics, I just want to explain, I've been kind of harping on that MS-65 grade. Let me explain exactly what that means and why. I mean, it's really important, but let me explain why it's so important. Because in numismatics, we grade coins on a 70 point scale. We call it the Sheldon scale. It's a 70 point scale used to determine the quality of a coin. Lowest coins on a scale, lowest grade is a one. A one is a coin you can hardly even identify it. It's so worn out. The highest quality coins on the scale, grade 60 or better. 60 or better are coins that are known as mint state or uncirculated. Very few classic coins like the Walking Liberty Half Dollar have survived in that condition. I showed you here what they usually look like. None of these are anywhere close to MS-60 or uncirculated condition. So few survived. When I was young, before numeric grading was really widely used as it is today, the ultimate coins were the coins that weren't just uncirculated, but jam uncirculated. Those were like an uncirculated coin that was just mind boggling how nice it was. Today, using the Sheldon scale, when we use that 70 point scale, a gem coin, coins that are the best of the best, those are considered MS-65. MS-65 or better is what we call gem. And that's what we have here. So you can imagine how rare these coins are in this MS-65 grade. And look, it makes sense why. I mean, think about it. When these big, these large silver coins were struck, they were produced in mass. These were produced for circulation. They're produced to be used. These coins are struck from the dies, from the minting press. They get ejected from that coin press into these giant bins. You get thousands of coins falling from that press into the bin, colliding with each other. I mean, it's like a demolition derby. These coins just colliding with each other. Metal on metal contact. So there's some real damage, dings, nicks, marks that happen to these large coins just by the way they're being produced and being ejected into this bin. And then that's, that's just the beginning of it though. These newly struck Walking Liberty Half Dollars, they go through sorting machines, counting machines. They're dumped into bags of 2,000 coins before being thrown onto trains shipped to banks around the country. So along this whole ride, you know, on trains, on wagons, these bags of coins are abrading against each other, you know, in the back of a truck. These things are banging around through all of that. Very few Walking Liberty half dollars have survived in any sort of excellent condition, high grade, let alone Mint State 65, gem brilliant uncirculated that we have here. When it comes to vintage coins like the Walking Liberty Half Dollar, it is incredibly rare to find mint state examples. I showed you what they typically look like. The coins I have here though, these aren't just mint state examples. These aren't MS-60 or MS-61 or MS-62 even. Those would be great coins. I mean, those would be spectacular coins falling clearly in that brilliant uncirculated category. These aren't even mint state 63 or 64. Those are some absolutely stunning grades. You know, those are coins we'd call choice or very choice, brilliant, uncirculated. But this complete walking liberty victory set, this complete victory set I have here today is in the practically unheard of grade of gem mint state 65 condition. When you consider how few walking liberty half dollars grade higher than this, I mean, you'll understand how big of a deal, how phenomenal of a grade this is. Look at how few have graded higher than MS-65. I mean, even in MS-65, I mean, you're talking about the entire series of Walking Liberty Half Dollars, going back to 1916 even, 485 million coins struck. Out of that 485 million, 0.05%. That's not 5%, that's not a half a percent even. Point 0.5% in this grade, MS-65. When you get higher than this, it goes down to 0.02%. I mean, that's a rounding error. That's virtually none, right? I mean, so rare when you get to higher grade. And when you get to the highest grades, these coins can bring a fortune. Here's an example from 1943. 
MS68 Plus. This coin sold for $120,000. So you can see what kind of demand there is for these high grade Walking Liberty half dollars and how rare they are. I mean, for collectors to go to an auction and fight it out to pay $120,000, you can understand the desirability of coins like this. And an MS65, these are spectacular examples. But besides the incredible quality and the history of these coins, I mean, let's look at the artwork here. These are works of art. I want you to take a look at this design. I mean, this is Adolf Weinman's masterpiece. I mean, this Walking Liberty design, this is the pinnacle of numismatic art. I mean, this is a design that's so iconic, so important to our nation's history, that this was the design that was selected and revived in 1986 to be used on the American Silver Eagle. The obverse showcases a glorious, full-body rendition of Lady Liberty, wrapped in the stars and stripes of the American flag. I mean, she's striding forward. She's striding towards that rising sun of a bright new day with an outstretched arm beckoning in hope and freedom. I mean, this is a truly stunning coin design. This coin is an inspiration. This is a rendition of Lady Liberty that's never been surpassed. This coin has entered the numismatic canon as the most significant half dollar design to be produced in American history. I mean, then there's the reverse of this coin exhibiting our valiant American bald eagle. This is undoubtedly one of the most artistic representations of our national bird. This eagle is perched powerfully atop this mountain, gazing triumphantly over its domain with wings confidently spread. I mean, this is like no eagle to appear on any US coin. It is spectacular. Now look, let me just sum this up here. I have a very limited number of these 20 coin Walking Liberty Victory sets today here. I mean, these are coins that are rare, so rare that it's so difficult to build these sets. A very limited amount of these sets. And these are in remarkable condition. These are in the remarkable grade of Gem Mint State 65. This is among the finest Walking Liberty half dollars that you could possibly acquire. To put a set of these rarities together in Gem Mint State 65, this is a real challenge. 20 coins here, 20 different coins in this set. I mean, this takes a lot of time, a lot of patience. This is no simple feat. But today I have a limited amount of these sets available for you while they last. So call in right now, get one of these victory sets because the history that this set tells is enough to make it a must have. I mean, the, the history alone makes this a must have. We're talking about the most beautiful half dollar design ever produced. One of the most beautiful coins in the history of world by a master artist whose work is on the Jefferson Memorial. It's in the Smithsonian Institution. This is a world renowned artist. And these are 20 miniature works of his art. The most important design of the 20th century. The, the design that revolutionized numismatics. I mean, a design whose artistry is so well revered that it was revived in 1986. Coin collectors couldn't live without this design. They brought it back on the obverse of the American Silver Eagle, where it's still used to this day. This historic victory set tells the story of World War II and how America's involvement ultimately led to an allied victory restored peace. This victory set commemorates some of the most important, most significant dates in American history, 1941. Here the US joined World War II, shifting the tide of the war, changing history. 1942, when the Battle of Midway took place, America showed the Japanese Navy we were a force to be reckoned with. 1943, Eisenhower was selected as the Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. You have coins from 1944, when we invaded Normandy on D-Day. Of course, 1945, the year of the Allied victory and the end of World War II. Then you have the low minted year, 1946, a low minted year. Harry Truman signed Proclamation 2714, officially ending the hostilities of World War II officially. And then of course, you have that final low minted year in this series, 1947, commemorating the peace that followed the war. And when it comes to history, 
when it comes to rarity, when it comes to beauty, when it comes to quality, this 20 coin Walking Liberty Half Dollar Victory Set is pound for pound the greatest set you could acquire, the greatest set you could put away. But you have to act fast. It takes a lot of time and effort, a lot of patience to put a set like this together. It's taken a long time to build these. In Mint State 65, these are among the finest walking Liberty half dollars that exist. It's just so rare to find silver half dollars from this era in this condition. I mean, you're talking about coins that are over 75 years old. Everyone, please take advantage of this opportunity to acquire this set of American treasures. If you can put away more than one, you can put away two or three for your family, for your grandkids, I strongly advise it. This is history that you can hold in your hand. This is the story of America. This is the story of justice, the story of peace. This set just so perfectly memorializes and commemorates one of the most consequential times in history. This is the type of set, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to purchase this, you wanna keep this in your family. The kind of set you're gonna to wanna to pass down to your kids and to your grandkids. This is a set of coins that if you put them away now, you'll look back in 10 years and you'll think this is one of the best decisions of my life. Because these are sets that don't come around often. A complete 20 coin Walking Liberty Victory set in Mint State 65. I mean, this is the pinnacle of numismatic artistry. I mean, the most beautiful coins you're going to find anywhere. Among, I mean, these are the best of the best right here. So please take advantage of this offer while you can. I have one of the most famous Lincoln cents. I mean, the Lincoln cent is such a fabled coin among collectors anyway. It's the coin I started collecting as a kid. When I talk to so many collectors, so many dealers, it's the coin they started as a kid, you know, filling those penny books or penny boards, trying to fill all the holes with all the different Lincoln cents, in particular those earlier with the wheat reverse. They were done from 1909 to 1958. Lincoln Cent, just one of the most famous coins there is. Right now, I have coins from the very first year of issue, the very first year that the Lincoln Cent was made. Now, remember, these coins were struck in 1909. This was that Renaissance era where the greatest designers were tasked to redesign our coins. A man named Victor David Brenner had made friends with Theodore Roosevelt. He had designed a Medal of Roosevelt celebrating the opening of the Panama Canal, and they became friendly. And knowing that the anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birth was coming up, they decided it would be appropriate to make a commemorative coin to celebrate Abraham Lincoln. So 1909 was that 100th anniversary centennial of Abraham Lincoln's birth. Brenner had already made some plaques and things, some artwork he had already done of Abraham Lincoln. So it made sense for him to be chosen to design the coin. So 1909 is the very first year of the Lincoln Cent. As you can imagine, it was a big deal when these coins were released. People were lining up to get examples of these new coins. Paper boys were selling them for more than face value. It's a one cent coin, they're selling them for five cents in 1909 when they came out. Now today, most of those coins have circulated. The ones circulated or not are generally toned down to brown. Again, think about coins you get in change. Think about the Lincoln cents you get in change today. Most of those coins are not that bright orange, coppery, mint red color that you see. I mean, the newest coins you get in change, coins from last few years might still be. When you look at coins that are 
10, 20, 30 years old, oftentimes they are brown in color. Now, going back to the first year of issue, can you imagine how few of these have survived in red? You know, it cannot be very many coins that have that red designation. Now, one thing about those very first Lincoln cents that were released in 1909 to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Abe Lincoln's birth, the very, very first coins were released on August 2nd of 1909. Those coins that were released on August 2nd had the designer's initials, Victor David Brenner, on the reverse of the coin. There's a little VDB at the bottom on the reverse of the coin, right there at about nine o'clock on that coin. When those coins came out, there was a bit of a controversy. There's a little bit of a public outcry. They felt that that was too conspicuous, that the designer was kind of advertising for himself, promoting himself. So there was a little bit of pushback about this VDB on the reverse. So much so that by August 6th, the Mint decided to discontinue these VDB issue coins. Like I said, they were released on August 2nd. By August 6th, they had become discontinued because of this controversy. So the coins I have for you today are among the very first Lincoln cents ever produced. This is the rookie card of Lincoln cents. This is the very first coins from the very first year. These were only released for four days before they discontinued these coins. Now, very few of these coins, Lincoln cents, have that VDB on the reverse. Let me show you a quick chart. Out of all the Lincoln wheat cents struck from 1909 to 1958, when they changed to that Lincoln Memorial reverse, they struck over 23 billion coins. Of that, less than a tenth of a percent have that VDB set of initials on the reverse. The coins I have here today are just spectacular. These are coins from the first release of the Lincoln cent. A coin that's so beloved that today in 2023, they have yet to remove Abe Lincoln from the obverse of these. How can you remove Abe Lincoln from the one cent piece? I mean, one of the most important people in American history, one of the most important people in the history of the world, Abraham Lincoln is on the one cent coin to this day. These are the very first pennies to have Abe Lincoln on the obverse, not only just from the first year, 1909, but from the very first batch that were released with that VDB on the reverse, the designer's initials, Victor David Brenner. These are Mint State 64, but besides being very choice uncirculated Mint State 64, these are red, not brown, not red and brown, red coins. These are brand new quality coins, but these are coins that were struck in the first initial release in August of 1909. And right now, these coins are available for, it's unbelievable how affordable these are. There's a comp here I have for $660. This coin sold for $660 in the same grade that I have here for you today. But I got such a deal on a group of these coins. They're not going to be $660. They're not going to be $500. They're not going to be $400. These coins aren't even going to be $200. Right now, these are just $195. Can you believe that? A Lincoln cent. The coin that has gotten so many people to collect coins, myself included, the coin that is so beloved that in 2023, I mean, what is that, 114 years later, they have yet to change the design. They've changed the reverse, but they have still left that obverse with Honest Abe on it since 1909. And these are the very first Lincoln cents ever to be produced, ever to be released, with that fabled VDB initials on the reverse, standing for Victor David Brenner, the man who Theodore Roosevelt personally selected to design these coins. And these are some of the most important Lincoln cents that will ever be released. And they're available tonight for not even $200. You know, these could easily be five, six hundred dollars. I showed you one that sold for over six hundred dollars in an auction, sold for six hundred sixty dollars. 
in an auction. It's two years ago this coin sold in 2021 for $660. Tonight you have the opportunity to get one of these coins, Mint State 64 Red, for less than $200. What an opportunity. This is like a numismatic Christmas present right here. Victor David Brenner, VDB, Victor David Brenner, a man who had built a friendship with Theodore Roosevelt while creating a medal of Roosevelt, and he selected to make this coin. Mm. Roosevelt had no problem with his initials on there. He saw that, but the public thought it was a little too conspicuous. I don't see the big deal, but today, actually, I do see a big deal because they only, you know, after four days, they decided to stop making, you stop releasing these coins. So today it is a very big deal. And again, just $195. I don't have too many of these here, so I'm gonna have to move along in a minute or two. Again, these are so hard to get. You know, 20, 30 years ago, once in a while, an old collection would come out and maybe you'd get a roll of these and you'd be able to find some of these coins that someone put away, you know, somebody's grandparent, great-grandparent put away when the new coins were released. Those old hoards are few and far between. You just don't see them anymore. These are getting so much harder. A few years ago, I used to offer these for sale on the show, and I could accumulate a group of several dozen, you know, if I ran around and, you know, took six months maybe. Right now, these are getting so hard to acquire. It is so hard for me to get a group of these. I recently was able to get a small mini hoard, a little collection of these, of a few dozen coins. And I'm offering them to you here because I got a great deal. I mean, I'm amazed that I can still offer these at $195. You know, I could see a day where, you know, wholesale I'm paying double that. Who knows when these coins are gonna come back. They're getting so much harder to get. Another one going out, thank you, just $195. These are among the very first Lincoln cents ever produced. The very first ones done. Again, the Lincoln cent, it was a huge deal. August 2nd, 1909, there were lines around the block at the Treasury Department trying to get these new coins. There were paper boys selling them in the streets, making a big profit. They'd go to the bank and get a roll of 50 coins, and those kids would make way more money selling these brand new coins than they would selling newspapers. It was a huge event. But within four days, people went, what are these VDB letters on the back? This is propaganda. This artist is promoting himself. We don't want this. And within four days, the Mint decided that we are no longer releasing these coins with the VDB. They stopped producing them, and they started making coins from new dies that did not have that VDB set of initials on the reverse. So going to let this go for another minute or so. We do have some left. We do have some lines open. But do yourself a favor. I mean, who wouldn't want the very first Lincoln cent? I mean, my little wheat cent collection when I was a kid, my little folder, my grandfather had a bucket of wheat pennies. He'd pull them out like bingo and call out the dates and mint marks. You know, I still had a lot of holes. It was hard to find a lot of those coins, but the ones I did have did not look anything like this. I did not have a single mint red Lincoln cent in my collection growing up. I did not have any mint state coins. There were coins that had circulated and were worn. It was too hard to find those coins for me when I started collecting. If I was presented with a coin like this as a kid, I would have done backflips. I mean, this is just, especially the first year of VDB, 1909 VDB sent in mint red, uncirculated mint state 64. I mean, this is less than $200. I mean, this to me is, is a no brainer. This is a coin that every collection, in my opinion, should have. I mean, it's such a piece of American history here. Just $195. Thank you so much for watching. A few days ago, I watched a documentary on the Revolutionary War. It was a six or seven part series in one hour segments. And I was struck once again by the incredible 
ultimate sacrifice men and women of our country have made time and again in the Revolutionary War and in many wars since to give up everything, including life itself, for liberty. That one word, liberty, so that we Americans may all live in a free country, a land of liberty. Now, when Patrick Henry uttered those famous words, give me liberty or give me death, it wasn't just a nice sounding speech. He really meant it. We are most fortunate to have inherited those freedoms passed down to us from the sacrifices of past generations of Americans. And that we Americans living today must in turn protect and preserve for the generations to come. It's all there on every one of our coins. That word, liberty, it's on every United States coin struck today. We have so much to be grateful for. And we have our coins as our inspiration, our daily reminder of who we are. There are many reasons I love United States coins, but for me personally, this is the most important reason. It is what United States coinage stands for, what our country stands for, and what we stand for. When I look at a U.S. coin, I think again how proud I am to be an American. I am amazed. I am truly amazed, folks. Uh, but this is what my, uh, makes my work so much fun, because uh, being a collector at heart, uh, to me, finding great rare coins is like treasure hunting. You know, I imagine myself a little kid looking for buried treasure out there somewhere. And when you can find some old coins that are in a condition you normally never see, uh, it's just like, it's like I'm back to being 10 years old again when I bought my first proof set, you know? And that's how I feel right now. This, what I have today shouldn't exist. It, 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 it would be as if you were back at the mint 50, 60 years ago, and as these coins were struck, you were right there catching these coins in some kind of velvet pillow and then putting them in some kind of airtight vacuum so that they would pres be preserved in the absolute highest possible pristine condition. Uh, and you just don't see proof coins that old in this kind of condition. Now, again, what is a proof coin? If you're new to collecting, a proof coin is a coin that represents the state of the art. The finest possible representation of a coin design the Mint's able to produce given the technology of the day. Now that technology of the day, that key phrase is what is most important because the technology has evolved so much in the past 50, 60 years. Nowadays when you buy a proof set, you get coins that are just absolutely beautiful state of the art coins because of the modern technology. Here's a set, 1990. Take a look at that Kennedy. Look at the beautiful proof, deep mirrored fields. Now, Caitlin's going to show you a, uh, a regular Kennedy. This is a, a commercial strike, a mint state coin. And, and it, just put the proof next to it, Caitlin, so they can see the difference. It's a commercial strike, folks, that it's uncirculated. But the commercial strike is a coin that was struck for circulation. It's meant to be used in commerce. Uh, they weren't given, given any special care or handling, so they, once they were struck, they were dumped into bins, and so they all have bag marks. Proof coins were coins struck from special, highly polished dies. They were struck at least twice, so that every detail of the coin would come out as the mint intended. And then once struck, they weren't allowed to braid with any other coins. They weren't dumped into bins like mint state coins, but they were individually handled. And then... Finally, they were put in special packaging. Now, this is a, that's a 1990 set you were look at, you're looking at, folks. State of the art. And if I had a bunch of these, I wouldn't be so excited. Because nowadays, they're all great like this. They're all great like this. This would be no, no you know, huge, huge accomplishment being able to offer you these sets. We have these in other presentations. They're great coins, but they don't have the kind of rarity 
that the coins I'm about to show you have. Now, you go back just a few years in proof making, say to 1975. This is here's 1997. You go, if you went and bought 100 sets of 1990s, they would all look like this. You go back just 15 years. Here's a set from 1975 I'll have Caitlin show you. This is just 15 years earlier. Take a look at the coins in this set. And this is only 15 years earlier. This is the difference in technology. They didn't have the same technology in 1975. And so you're getting coins that don't have anywhere. Look at that. Look at the, the haze and the, on all the uh, smudginess and the discoloration. The, the penny is black. And that's a 1975 set, just struck 15 years earlier than that 1990. And that, but that's the difference in technology, in the packaging. That's how far it evolved from 1975 to 1990. Now, but we're going to go even farther back, folks. The coins I have for you today are from a much earlier era. These coins were struck in San Francisco that you just saw, these proof coins. The coins I have were the last coins struck at the Philadelphia Mint in proof condition. The Philadelphia Mint struck coins in proof through 1964. The Philadelphia Mint had the most primitive proof making technologies. I mean, they basically made proofs the same way they were made back in the 1800s. And so the quality of the Philadelphia Mint proofs are generally the poorest when it comes to comparing proof coins of the various eras. And I have some of the finest known complete sets of proof coins struck at the Philadelphia Mint today from 1955 through 1963, the very last year of the Franklin Half Dollar Series. Now, folks, I've been handling the finest proof coins for my clients for decades now. And there is no other seller on TV who can make that claim, who can tell you that they have assembled many of the finest collections for their clients that you can find on the NGC registry, the PCGS registry. You know, NGC, PCGS, they are the two major grading services. You go on their website, they have what's called a registry where collectors can list their sets, and NGC and PCGS ranks them by the grades in the sets, and the, the higher the grades, the higher the sets rank. And if you look on the, either the NGC or PCGS website, I'll, I just pulled a few just to, to show you. You know, this is, what I, this is what I do. This is what I love to do. This is what I've been doing for over 30 years, building, helping my clients build finest known collections, finest known collections, the collections of their dreams. And if their budget couldn't afford the finest known, I would build the collection of that, that their budget that was within their budgetary guidelines that no other dealer could possibly match. This is what I've always done. You know, whether your budget is $100,000 a, a, a year or $1,000 a year or $500 a year, it doesn't matter to me. My goal is to offer you the best possible eye appeal quality and rarity for your numismatic dollar. Because when I started out, my coin budget was 100 bucks a month. So I love rare coins that are $1,000, $10,000, but I also love rare coins that it can be acquired for less than $50. Some of the sets I've assembled for my clients. You can find them on the registry. I've highlighted them in orange. When you go here, the Seated Liberty Half Dollar Series in proof condition on the NGC registry, the number one set on the NGC registry. Uh, now folks, I'm doing this not to brag. This is not about me. This is about you. This is what I offer you and I'm willing to offer you and what I do for you. This is what I do for my clients. It's the number one set. It's, uh, it's, it goes by the name of First Strike Society, which is our name, and the client's name, Everest Honeycutt. Here's another set, the Barber Half Dollar Set, the finest known number one ranked Barber Half Dollar Set. Finest known, number one ranked Walking Liberty half dollar set. And now, now folks, when I say I've built these sets for clients, uh, if I have only put one or two coins in the collection, I don't count it as having built the set for the client. To me, to have helped the client make a number one set, I've had to put 
place at least 40 to 50 percent of the coins in that collection to make it a number one set. In most cases, I've put 100 percent of the coins in the collection, as in the Murphy collection, to make that set. You, uh, let's go here on the PCGS website. We'll just take one. The Mint State Franklins. Number one set. Finally, we got the Proof Franklins. He's had the number one set for over a decade. They even quote my book there in the description there on the PCGS website. If you're interested in this series, for more information, refer to Cameo and Brilliant Proof Coinage uh, by Rick Tamaska. So, when I tell you I got something really, really special for you <laughs> that I'm really excited about, I, I hope it, it gets your attention. About two months ago, I received a phone call from a dealer friend I hadn't heard from in maybe 20 years. A client of his had just passed away and uh, he had left an estate. He was, a, he was a big collector, a big collector. And he had many, many, many safe deposit boxes full of coins. And a big part of that collection were original sealed proof sets from the 1950s and 1960s. And these things had not moved in decades. And I bought the deal. And, you know, we're friends. He gave me a really good price. And I had these coins graded and I got very fortunate. And so what I have are complete year sets from 1955 through 1963. Now a year set is a proof coin of every denomination and type struck by the mint in that year. So in 1955, the complete set would include the Franklin Half Dollar, Washington Quarter, Roosevelt Dime, Jefferson Nickel, and Lincoln Cent. The same through all, for all the sets through 1963. And we're starting with the 1955s. I have these in proof 67 condition. Now, folks, this is the 55s, 56s, 57s. And if you understand how these coins were made back then to survive in this state, here's how the proof sets came. Patrick just showed you a couple of the years. Here's how the proof sets came back then. This is the last year of the series from the Philadelphia Mint, 1964. This was an early era in proof making. Proof making was not state of the art. Proof making, it was, it was like you're in the prehistoric age. And they came in these envelopes. And half the time you get them in like this. And again, they were struck in limited numbers. And in this case, the coins are just rattling around together. And then the 55s were worst of all, folks. The 55s came in these boxes. Uh, well, obviously the people at the Mint were not chemists because they put the coins in these little polyethylene or whatever it is envelopes that were kind of a vinyl type material uh, that were very pliable. So it was nice in that they didn't hairline the coins. Unfortunately, there was a, um, there is some wrapping, I guess. There are, uh, unfortunately, they would chemically rack with the silver coins. You look at that half dollar. If I were to take that half dollar, maybe I should take the half dollar out of there, Caitlin. Um, you look at the coin and you see a lot of unsightly toning. I'm going to just open this up real quickly here. That is because this coin, and I write about this in all my books, and you try to remove this toning and the stuff go, turns just brown. And you can see all over the reverse of this coin uh, because of the packaging. So, right out of the proof set. And then, folks, if it has come out of the proof set, again, you're talking about a proof coin that's 60 years old. Here's, a here's your typical 1955 Franklin. And these coins, have, you know, because of the holders they were in, they've been mishandled. Look at all of the hairlines in front of the face. These are delicate coins. If they don't have the best handling over the decades, they end up being proof 60s, or if you're lucky, a proof 63. This is about a proof 60, 61. So to get these in proof 67 is extraordinary. Now, over the last few years, I've talked to you about these coins, uh, about how since, for example, April 2011, when silver was at $47 an ounce, I was offering Proof 67 Franklins where you can get the entire set back then, April 2011, for less than $4,000. Um, and um, a lot of, there's a lot of dealers who were just promoting the heck out of silver back then. And there were a lot of, I know a lot of collectors, a lot of customers who really 
bought hook, line, and sinker, uh, some of the pitches some of these sellers would give about silver. You know, how it's, you know, they would, they would give you quotes about all these very smart people who were predicting silver would be $50 an ounce, $100, $200 an ounce within a couple of years, you know? And, and there were a lot of people who put a lot of money into that based on what those people were telling them. So now here we are, a few years later. So last I checked, silver was around $17, $16 an ounce. I switched on a, a, another one of these coin shows just the other night, a couple, couple nights ago, one of these sellers. They were selling American silver eagles. And they were talking about how silver had just taken a huge jump. Okay, this was a live show. They were talking about silver had just taken a huge jump, but they're holding the prices on these American silver eagles to the same price that they had before. And I'm sitting there watching this, and I'm saying, what? Silver took a huge jump. So immediately I go to my laptop computer. I go to Kitco. If you want to know the latest spot price of silver, you go to the Kitco website. And I go there, I'm thinking well, it must be around $19.50, $20 an ounce, okay, because it had been between $16 and $17 an ounce for months. And the way these guys were talking, it had taken a huge jump of several dollars. And so I go on there, the latest spot price was $16.29. It hadn't done a darn thing. Now, I call that misinformation, okay? There's other words for it, but I'm being polite. Now, in that same time frame, this is stuff I don't have to make up to sell something. Okay? I don't have to do that. All I try and do is give you the facts and give you the information. Back at that same time frame, I was talking about Franklin half dollars. You could get a, a set of those Franklin half dollars in proof 67 for around $4,000. Okay? And October 2014, that same set was around 9,200, folks. And I told you back then in October, hey, it's going to, folks, it has a long, long way to go. 9,200 is just the beginning. The latest numbers, just from a, from a most recent, just from about a month or two ago, you, again, I don't have to make this up. You go to the NGC website. You go to the price guide on the NGC website. You can, anybody can access it. You go on their website where it has the price guide. You add the numbers up. And that's what you'll come up with, unless they've gone up some more. It's going to be at least $10,235. It's something I don't have to make up. The beauty of this collection, folks, you've got every denomination. The beauty of this collection is that where I had, because of the rarity of these Franklins, the demand for the coins in high grade, coins that I had been paying, in some cases, $200 and $300 for, from this collection, I have been essentially been able to get these coins at this price, this old price. And why I have, have I been able to get these coins at this old price is because I acquired this original deal where the coins were stored for decades in safe deposit boxes. We got them graded. And so I got them at a price that nobody else is going to be able to get them at. They're just way, way, way below market. They're the complete ear sets. Now, before I price the ear sets, there's one thing you got to know. There's five coins in the set. Of course, the most valuable coin is the half dollar. But folks, those other four coins <laughs> are not chopped liver. <laughs> in fact, the Lincoln set do not underestimate the value of the Lincoln set, especially those early years with the wheat back Lincoln. If, for example, you wanted to build a 1941 Lincoln set in Proof 67, a, a complete set, a half dollar, I've got a half dollar um, that uh, we'll be offering on a future show in, in Proof 67, it's about $2,000. You could get a quarter for six, $700, a dime for six, $700, a nickel for a few hundred dollars. So those four coins would run you maybe $4,000. The penny, the 41 penny, however, here's one that sold most recently, $28,200. That was about a year ago. A few years before that, it was only 18000 so it had gone from 18000 to 28000 Now the Franklins, let's cut to the chase. The Franklin market, I'm seeing prices well above the NGC price guide uh, values. In these Franklins, here's a 63 I see in proof 67 for $349. 
Here's a 60 and prove 67 for 185. Here's a 59, folks. Proof 67. This is a top rated seller. 59. Proof 67 just by itself. $800. Just for that one coin. If you would add all the, the just the half dollars up, where you, where, you, where you seeing them on eBay, Proof 67, you'd find these sets around $2,000 just for the half dollars. Just for the half dollars. Take a look at this set. I have it in Proof 67, folks. And I have it, again, at a price that's 2011 prices. But what I also have, what I haven't told you about yet, I have a limited number of these coins, of these complete sets in proof 68. Every set, proof 68, folks. These are haze-free, pristine, now the Proof 67 set, folks, I'm going to price out the Proof 67s for you. You can get them by individual years. If you want the 1963, the 1963 is only $199 for the entire set in 67. You figure the grading costs alone, folks, the grading and shipping costs are over $200. And I've got the entire set for $199. The 1962 set, the entire set in 67 is $199. The 61 set, the entire year set in Proof 67, $199. The 60, $209 in 67. The 59, $229. You, again, you saw that eBay seller, the half dollar alone he wanted $800 for. $229 for the entire set. And that's the first year of the Memorial Reverse Lincoln. The 58 set. With the last year of the week back, Lincoln, $239. The 57 set in 67, $229. The 56, $239. And that 55, with the lowest mittage and in those box sets, $409. That's the toughest set of all. But now we get to these Proof 68s. And you got to see what these Proof 68s are going for, folks. Uh, I don't have price comps for all of these. I found a few in Proof 68. I'll start with the 1963. Here's a 1963. Here's a top rated seller selling a, a 63 in Proof 68 for 500. Here's a top rated seller selling a Proof 68 for 650. Just show you a few of these. Uh, we'll go to get to a couple tougher, tougher dates. Here's a 60, 1,095. 59, 1,095. 58, 1,095. 57, seven, you know, 780. You add all those top rated sellers up, just for the Franklins alone, you've got $6,400 when you add those up. 1956, and that includes 56 to 63, by the way. I haven't included the 1955, and it's $6,400. If you get the 55 in there, you're, you're up around 7000 Here I'm going to offer you, and this is where, again, because I got this deal, it was a fresh deal, where you have record prices, where you have NGC price guide bouncing the, the set up over $10,000. I've basically got these at 2011 prices. The entire set in Proof 68. That includes the Lincoln Cent, Jefferson Nickel, Roosevelt Dime, Washington Quarter, Franklin Half Dollar. I only have a few of these sets. Please call in now. These sets are not $8,000 or $9,000. They're not $7,000, which is what you'd pay just for the half dollars. We're talking all 45 coins in Proof 68. If you want to build an ultimate collection, 45 coins, folks, you can't do any better than this. Do the math on it. 45 into what I have it at. This is an amazing, an amazing deal in Proof 68 condition. Get ready now. $3,195. 3000 I got 
Kaylin, can you say that three thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars? You say it. Three thousand one hundred and ninety-five dollars. That's a huge deal for all of these coins. Huge is not the word, Caitlin. It's a once in a lifetime <laughs> deal. Huge is not the word. This is a once in a lifetime deal, folks. This is ginormous. Gargantuan. <laughs> it's what? Gargantuan. Gargantuan. Yes. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing the math on this real quickly. That comes to roughly, Caitlin, uh, less than $70 a coin. If my math is correct, that comes to less than $75 a coin. The so entire a, a 55 half dollar for $70, that's pretty Well, when, when you break yeah. it out coin by coin, that's about $70 a coin, folks. $70 a coin. $70 a coin in proof 68. Again, we have the 1955 to 63 year sets in proof 67. You want a 55 set in 67, it's only $409. The 56 is only $239. The 57 set in 67 is $229. The 58 in 67 is $239. The 59 is only 229. The 60 and 67 two, is only 209. The 61 is only 199. The 62 is only 199. And the 63 is 199. If you added all those up, it would be a great deal. It would be $21.51, but you can get the entire 45-coin uh, collection in Proof 67 for $19.95. This is a limited time offer, folks. This is like many, many of my presentations where I, I get these deals. I just gave a presentation not too long ago on some MS67 Wheatback Lincoln sets, and I told the, the viewers that when, once those are gone, I won't be able to offer those at that price anymore. And that is absolutely 100% true. You know, because I get these collections where I get first in line on these, and when, these things come along very rarely, and when you get them, you know, you put them out there, and you just hope that the viewers take advantage of them, because, uh, again, once they're gone, you don't see these prices again. But the deal, if you can swing, 1200 extra dollars to get these in proof 68. This is something I got really fortunate on. I have a limited number of these sets in 68. We've sold, how many of them we sold? It looks like we've sold four of these sets in 68 so far. This is the kind of set that a year from now will probably be far more than what you're seeing today, folks. This is just a great, great price. Another one sold in 68. We're getting uh, individuals getting the, collectors getting the individual year sets in 67. I mean, for $199 uh, for a, uh, a year set, folks, you can't beat that. Your grading fees alone are gonna be over $100. Your shipping fees are gonna be over $100. The co cost of the coins, uh, the $199 for the, the, the 61, 62, and 63 year sets in Proof 67 is an extraordinary opportunity. So, and the complete set in 67 for only $19.95 when there are dealers selling just the Franklins alone for more than that. This is why I am working on my next book because my next book will be about all the U.S. proof coins struck during the post-World War II and pre-World War II. It won't be just on half dollars. Uh, my first book covered the Lincoln cents through, through, through the half dollars, and there is so much potential in the Lincoln cents that Jefferson Nichols, Roosevelt Dimes, and Washington Quarters, it would be a huge mistake to ignore those at this time when I've got them at such a rock bottom heck of a deal for you today. I'm going to do a last call on this because, again, this is, uh, this is something where I was very fortunate, very fortunate. This was, a, a, again, it came from a call from a dealer I hadn't talked to in decades. A client of his had just passed away. He had uh, a safe deposit boxes full of some original sets that hadn't been touched in decades. And uh, this dealer friend sold me the entire deal at a great price. 
Uh, we sent them in and we got some grades that you normally don't get when you submit coins from this era. And because we got some great grades, I'm able to pass some great savings on to you. Those 68 sets, folks, this and 55 to 63 set and 68 would normally be a $4,000 set. You know, whenever I've offered it in the past, uh, which is uh, very rare occasions, there have only been one or two occasions when I, where I've been able to offer one of these entire sets in 68, they've been around $4,000. But through this or because of this deal, I've got it while, while they last for only $31.95. Hope you take advantage of at least one of these. At least get one of the proof 67 year sets, folks. Uh, I, you know, this is just a great, great opportunity to own some of the finest, finest proof coins from a bygone era in a condition you just won't find. You just won't find this kind of quality. You go to your local coin shop, local coin convention, you just won't find year sets of this caliber. This is just absolutely extraordinary. Caitlin is showing you uh, wheat back and this shows flip it over to show you the wheat back and that you got the 55 wheat back 56 wheat back 57 and then the 58 which is the last of the wheat backs so you got those coins in the set I uh, I've seen those on eBay here's a 56 wheat back on eBay and proof 68 for hundred ninety four dollars a top rated seller in proof 68 here's a 55 for three hundred dollars in proof 68 Wheat backs go for a lot of money when you can find them in this extraordinary condition. Thank you for watching this presentation. We still have people calling in. If you have any questions, you know, about any of these sets, call in. Uh, we'll, I'll try and get to your questions and get back to you. But um, uh, I urge you to take advantage of this while I have them. These uh, six, seven sets and these six, eight sets will not last very long, especially the six, eight sets will not very, uh, last very long at this price. Thanks, uh, thanks again for listening to me. Even if you don't buy one of these sets, I hope you learn something, but I do hope you get one of these sets, folks. Uh, I wanna thank everybody who has acquired one of these sets. Uh, you, uh, you just got a great deal, and it's the kind of thing where I, it makes me so happy because I know from my experience that coins like this uh, have a way of really taking care of my clients when they hold on to them over the years. You know, and that's what it's all about. Getting coins that offer you exceptional IP for their date, exceptional quality, exceptional rarity, and getting them at a great price that gives you all the meat on the bone. Thanks again for watching. Here on Rick's U.S. Coin Show, Jack, James, and I take great pride in providing you, our viewers, with relevant coin information and special numismatic history. We enjoy creating short documentaries on important people in the coin community, like John Mercanti, Edmund Moy, and Miles Standish. We have also produced film shorts on historical numismatic landmarks, like the Granite Lady in San Francisco, the famed Carson City Mint in Nevada, and Sutter's Mill, home of the California Gold Rush. To watch all these great documentaries and learn more about the wonderful world of numismatics, go to the Rare Collectibles TV YouTube page. Type Rare Collectibles TV in the search bar and click on the pic of Jack and me. You can watch many numismatic videos, including interviews, documentaries, coin trivia, the adventures of Rick and Jack, and much more. And make sure you click the subscribe button in the top right corner so that you'll be notified every time a new video is posted. Where else can you get so much numismatic info and fun all in one place? So go to the Rare Collectibles TV page on YouTube and join the hundreds of subscribers already enjoying our YouTube videos. Thanks for watching Rick's U.S. Coin Show. This is a collector's dream come true.
Welcome, everybody. I'm James Gerstel. This is Rare Collectibles TV. I have a very limited amount of time to, well, to tell you a story. We have an extremely rare Kennedy half dollar. Now, circumstances of the way the world is today has brought us to this point where we have an amazing issue of a brand new Kennedy half dollar. Now, this is just going to be the second time since 1964, just the second time, that the Kennedy half dollar has been struck in absolute pure silver. 0.999 fine silver. The highest purity of silver you can get. And beginning in 2019, the Kennedy half dollar became a pure silver coin. And this is going to be from now on. So beginning in 2019, a new series has been born, a new type of Kennedy half dollar. Now, this is an extremely, extremely rare issue. It is the highest grade you can attain for a coin. It is a proof 70, and that proof 70 designation with the number 70 connotates absolute perfection. It is a perfect, flawless, graded example in pure silver. The very first coin that I ever received as a coin collector when I was seven years old was a 1964 Kennedy half dollar. Because of that 1964 Kennedy half dollar, I fell in love with the Kennedy half dollar. And when I saw the Kennedy half dollar from the 1964 proof set or any of the Kennedy half dollars from subsequent years, what really struck me was the amazing mirror on the coin, the amazing strike, how much different it was than the ordinary coin that was meant to circulate. Because what you're looking at right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a coin for the collector. A coin that is produced by the U.S. Mint, especially for collectors. Everything about it is special. The dies that were used to strike. The coin blank, known as the planchet. The amount of times that the coin was struck, a minimum of two times. And that was to ensure that detail on this Kennedy half dollar was displayed like on no other coin. When I saw my first Kennedy half dollar in pure silver, it was a notch above. It, it was amazing because there was illustrated in this strike more detail than you will ever get a chance to see on a Kennedy half dollar. Beginning in 1964, when the first Kennedy half dollar was issued, the coin has been the most popular half dollar series ever. And as a coin itself, one of the most popular coins in the world. Because Kennedy's reach, his charisma, his history has a worldwide reach. A lot of it has to do with Kennedy himself. A lot of it has to do with the fact that he implored the United States of America to get to the moon, to make it to the moon, and to make it back safely. That was Kennedy. He's responsible for the United States of America beating the Russians into space. And that is a, a crowning achievement that, to this day, is memorialized. And also, the coin itself. The coin itself was originally intended to be a memorial to John F. Kennedy, and that is why, since 1964, its design has remained as bold today as it was when it was first issued. But you will never get the opportunity to see a Kennedy half dollar in pure silver until you have had the opportunity to get one of these coins. Mintages for Kennedy half dollars in proof, beginning in 1964, now, every single year, you can see that collectors are drawn to the Kennedy half dollar. Those are collector versions. So when you look at all of those dates and all of those mintages and all those proof Kennedy half dollars, I think what really stands out more than anything is the figures that you'll see at the very bottom. Now, I've got two in there that are really important because these are the only 2.999 Kennedy half dollars that have ever been issued. 2019 was the first year. 
And it was a big year. But take a look at Mintage. The Mintage for 2019, almost twice what 2020s are running at. That's your first indicator right there. Low Mintage, kind of an ignored coin. Well, again, circumstances has brought us to this point where the 2020 Kennedy half dollar in a perfect proof 70 grade in pure silver has a very, very low population, a very low mintage. And as many times is the case, the first year of issue of a brand new series or a brand new type of coin, everybody comes out of the woodwork and everybody gets on that coin. The second year, nine times out of 10, the mintages will be dramatically lower, making them a much more scarce version and a much more harder to achieve numismatic, well, harder to add that numismatically to your collection. The figures for 2020, for first day of issue for this coin are right there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, why is that so important? 1,944 coins. Well, it's so important because look at the year before, 2019. Over 7,100 first day of issue coins were populated, were graded in a perfect grade by both grading services. This year, 2020, that's it. You're looking at less than 2,000 coins. Right now, the whole world is crazy for coins. Have you noticed? I want to really point out, everywhere you go today, Nobody has any coins in stock. Hey, they'll take your order, they'll take your money, but you're not gonna get coins for weeks, could even be longer. I've been calling around everywhere and I've been running up against people telling me three weeks, two months, on every single try. Everybody, everywhere, nobody has any product. Well, we have these coins live. We have them in house. They're in stock and they're ready to go. And this is one of the rarest rarest first day of issues you are ever gonna get your hands on. Now, why does everybody love first day of issue so much? Well, look at the name, first day of issue. That means that these coins on the very first day of issue were in the grading room, being graded to be able to carry that label. Not a first strike, not an early release, but first day of issue. That's big and only 1,944 coins have been designated by either grading services first day of issue. This coin is the ultimate numismatic example of a pure silver Kennedy half dollar. There is no higher grade. This is the Kennedy half dollar from 1964 to 2020. Over four billion coins released into circulation. Now, as a proof, a fraction of that amount, and the proofs are designated for collectors only, but though it's a fraction, 153 million. The percentage of the proofs to business strikes as if that doesn't illustrate the rarity already, 3.6%. And as a percentage, if you like percentages, it's 0.15 not even one-fifth of one percent, less. So a really, really small amount end up as a perfect certified 70 grade by either of the grading services. The pure silver Kennedy half dollar is a newcomer to the Kennedy series, a new type. But from now on, every Kennedy half dollar struck for the collector in silver will be pure. But so far, only two issues the 2019 and the 2020. Now, again, when you look at how many issues of business strikes between all the dates and mint marks, 211. In proof, 86. But in pure silver proof, two. So now is the time to start building this new type, this pure silver Kennedy half dollar. Less than 2,000 people in the world are gonna be able to own a first day of issue. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, it's great coin, love to have it. It's the most beautiful Kennedy half dollar I ever have seen, but I don't want to spend three, four, or even $2,000 for this coin. I, 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 I see that it's phenomenal and, and worth every penny. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ultimate Kennedy half dollar. 
with one of the lowest, if not the lowest, populated amount, the population of less than 2,000, $395, $395. Now, needless to say, no longer are there going to be first day of issues. You could buy a thousand Kennedy half dollars and submit them. You will not get one first day of issue. And that doesn't even count how many coins you would have to submit to get just one 70 grade, one perfect grade. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, collectors of coins are, I mean, it seems to me as if almost everybody in the whole world has become a coin collector. It's amazing. But when I pick up the phone and I call numismatic firms that have been in business for 40 years or longer who have the greatest connections, who should have coins waiting to be delivered to their customers when they don't even have one single Kennedy half dollar, then I know that this is the it coin and now is the time. And right now, for the ultimate in a Kennedy half dollar, I don't think there's a better time because this is the coin everybody wants. And I'm talking millions of Kennedy half dollar collectors. Millions of proof Kennedy half dollars have been distributed to collectors around the world, over 150 million of them. And only, well, 1,944 of these coins, second year of issue in pure silver in the ultimate proof 70 ultra cameo grade exist. And that's it. And when you look at last year, the first year of issue, uh, one of the key dates for sure, the, the beginning of a new series, there were over 7,000 of those coins. And again, ladies and gentlemen, not $2,000, not $1,800, not $1,500, not $900, and $95, $395. I know what you're thinking, because you're looking at that Kennedy half dollar like I am, and the first thing that comes to mind is I have never seen, even in silver, a Kennedy half dollar with this much cameo, this much contrast, that much mirror. It has everything, and the detail of this coin, it, it, it almost defies explanation. There is, a, there is not an adjective in, in the dictionary. Sir, do you still have a thesaurus? Because if you do, can you give it to me so? Folks, superlative, stunning, stellar, perfection. The most beautiful Kennedy half dollar. This, not a single word of that is exaggeration. This is the ultimate, $395. Production has stopped for so many things that the U.S. meant. We live in a time right now where it's tough to get precious metals. And why is that? Well, for thousands of years, precious metals, gold and silver, have been used as the basis for all money, the original form of money. That's no different here in the United States of America. Ever since the birth of this nation, precious metals in the form of money have been the most hoarded form of money? Well, once the silver disappeared from all our regularly circulating coinage, well, collector coins and coins from the bygone eras have ruled. This coin starts, well, it continues the beginning of a new series. And I have to say, if you do a little bit of investigation, you will find out that oftentimes, if not most times, if not every time, the second year of issue of a brand new series, numismatically speaking, is so much scarcer than the first. And that's where we find ourselves today with the 2020 pure silver, perfect grade proof 70 ultra cameo, 2020 Kennedy half dollar struck at the San Francisco Mint. The Mint with a worldwide reputation for striking the finest in proof coins. And you know, since 1968, proof coinage has been struck at the San Francisco Mint. And there is a reason for that. Because since the beginning, when San Francisco opened up its doors, the reputation for striking coins of the highest quality has oftentimes gone to the San Francisco Mint. So you're looking at the original example of the Kennedy half dollar. 
That coin that featured the original obverse design, that was on John F. Kennedy's 1961 inaugural medal. And in fact, his portrait was actually approved by Kennedy himself. Before his inauguration, a sample of that design was shown to John F. Kennedy, and he approved it. And the reverse of that presidential medal also featured the presidential seal. Though on this coin, on when the Kennedy finally came out, the presidential seal took up the whole reverse. So oftentimes, you'll want to see a bold design on a coin that's a memorial to a fallen president. This got it right. Folks, in order for this coin to attain the ultimate grade of perfect Proof 70 Ultra Cameo, it not only had to appear flawless, but under five times magnification, it had to be flawless. So if you could not see anything when it was blown up five times its regular size, it wouldn't be a perfect coin. So every one of these have had third-party expertise attesting to the perfection. $395. This is it. There will not be any more of these. First day of issues are the most sought after in a grading service holder, the label of a grading service holder, even more so than early release or first release first day of issue. The earliest that you can get a coin from a grading service in perfect proof 70 for less than two grand, even less than $1,000 today, $395. The ultimate Kennedy half dollar for 2020. Thank you for watching. And you know, I always say Stay tuned because there's going to be something great coming up next. Well, I can guarantee you that's true. Thank you again. Looking for Rare Collectibles TV's hottest products? Searching for new additions to the RCTV inventory? Seeking some closeout items with discounted prices? Then go to rarecollectibles.tv.com and click on the super specials icon in the upper right of the RCTV homepage. Check out all the great collectibles on the super specials webpage. Best sellers, one of a kind numismatic treasures, great new finds, Closeout items at collector friendly prices. Don't miss out. Items change every week. Supplies are limited. Go to rarecollectibles.tv.com and click on the super specials icon at the upper right of the homepage. That's rarecollectibles.tv.com. Hey, collectors, welcome back. I'm James Gerstell. You're watching Rare Collectibles TV. Are you a coin collector right down to your very core? I know I am, and that's why I'm so excited to bring you this coin. Hey, this is no fluff coin. This is one of the major numismatic events in the whole history of Lincolns. You know the Lincoln penny, first struck in 1909, one of the most famous United States coins ever issued, and the longest running United States coin series. The Lincoln penny has been in existence since 1909. No other coin can say that. And the Lincoln penny has so many rarities in the series. I'm going to name a few of them for you. I'm going to show you some great coins. But I think added to those record-breaking coins is a brand new, recently released issue of a Lincoln cent that had never been done before. First of its kind. In all the years of the Lincoln Cent, beginning in 1909, and especially since the establishment of West Point as a mint, which was back in 1988, and as a facility in 1938, there had never been a West Point struck Lincoln Cent. This also is something very, very unique. It had never been done before, will never be done since. It's a reverse 
proof. Reverse proofs are different than traditional proofs. It's like a photograph and negative, where in a traditional proof, the field, the background of the coin is mirrored. And Lincoln's profile will be satin finished. But in a reverse proof, it's backwards. The field, the background of the coin, normally mirrored, is in satin finish, and Lincoln's profile is mirrored, reverse proof. Now, this is a striking method that has been employed by the U.S. Mint just since 2006. And these coins, and this is the real difficult part, because these coins in reverse proof are very difficult to achieve in a perfect grade, even tougher than the proofs, because they have so much satin in the field that just the slightest little nick, you can see it from a mile away. Every one of these coins we have are the ultimate grade of reverse proof 70, red in color. The first reverse proof scent. And just to add a little spice to your life, Lindell Bass, who is the designer of the reverse, Victor David Brenner, the designer of the obverse, has autographed each and every one of the labels. Now, I want you to know right from the get-go, we have an unbelievable price on this coin. This is the first ever W Mint Mark Lincoln Penny. Never been done before. Probably never going to be done again. This coin series has so many collectors, literally millions of collectors. And I have to tell you, I've been a coin collector for a long time, even longer than I've been a coin dealer. And I, when I first started in the coin business, it was in the 1970s, okay? Yeah, tail end, but still. And I really had the privilege of meeting so many great numismatists who are stars of the day and legends today. And you would be, well, I don't think you'd be surprised. You, you would be uh, informed to know that nearly every single one of those guys who today are collecting multi-million dollar coins and dealing in multi-million dollar coins started by collecting Lincoln cents. The reason for that is because the Lincoln cent had a very auspicious beginning. 1909, when the Lincoln penny first hit the scene, it was originally intended just to be a one-year type. But we all know the story of the VDB, Victor David Brenner's initials prominently displayed on the coin, a big no-no in coin design, and he did that. So the 1909 VDBs, especially with the S mint mark, where the mintage was just really low, are so sought after. But there's a whole host of other great coins from the Lincoln Cent series that people love to collect. And now we can add the reverse proof I want to stop the presses right here real quick because I want to let everybody know that in order to get this coin from the U.S. Mint, you had to order a United States silver proof set to get the first ever reverse proof Lincoln penny. You had to order the proof set. Now, I just looked before I came on the air here and 2019 silver proof sets are selling right now for $64.95. And the reason why I bring that up is in order to achieve this great first ever reverse proof Lincoln cent in a perfect grade of 70, well, you have to submit multiple coins. And in order to submit multiple coins, you have to buy multiple silver proof sets. Now, Easily, it's going to cost you between $40 and $50 just to certify one coin. Easily. That doesn't include the cost of the coin. So think about it. How many proof sets would you have to buy at $65 a piece to submit the Lincoln Cent, the first ever and one of the rarest coins in the Lincoln series, to get a perfect grade? It's not going to be one, I can tell you that. It could be five to ten. So we're here to do all that work for you. Now, at the very bottom of the list, very bottom, is the 2019 first ever West Point reverse proof Lincoln Penny. The mintage is 383,590. And I want you to take a look at the top of the list. For instance, the 1955 from a proof set, low mintage. Today, now you're not going to get a 1955 in a perfect proof 70 grade. Just never going to happen. 
But here's one in a really high grade of 67, proof 67, and it's almost $340. Next on that list was 1956, and the same holds true for the 1956. Never going to get a perfect grade. Here is a really nice coin, a proof 67. One of the nicest examples you're ever going to see, and it's almost 900 bucks. Now, on that list also was 1958, and I found a 1958 in a proof 67 star. So superlative quality, but not as high a grade as a perfect grade. And this one's a great deal, actually. It's almost $300, $299.99. Now, I don't want you to think that you have to go that far back in time. That's pretty old, right? 62 years, wow. So I don't want you to think you have to go back that far to get a really rare Lincoln penny. This one is from 1971. It's $2,500. Now, it is a double die. I will acknowledge that. But I want this to represent the collectability of Lincoln Sense. And it's not an 09 SVDB. You may not even know that that's a rare date. But that's what Lincoln pennies are to collectors. They just don't come around in highest grades attainable unless you want to drop some pretty fair coinage. 1982. The last of the copper cent, right? We all know this one struck in San Francisco. It's a pretty darn high grade, 6'6", six, six, almost $1,000. So right now, for $129, you can buy the latest and greatest, and the only, from West Point. I want you to take advantage of these right now because these coins, as they get further away from the release date, become so hard to get. And that's a unique strike. There aren't very many reverse proofs, and everybody loves something new from the U.S. Mint. Remember, $129. Take a look. This is extremely important. This is why there's a call to urgency here, because the reverse proof Lincoln sent is not grading high in a perfect proof 70 grade, reverse proof 70. In fact, only 0.7%. You know, that's like three quarters of 1%. Le substantially less than 1% are grading in a perfect reverse proof 70 grade. And every one we have is a reverse proof 70. $129. If that isn't enough reason by itself to establish how great this coin is destined to become because so many of its uh, predecessors are there already. And this one's got a lot of rarity built right in. Plus, it's the only one of its kind. First ever W Mint Mark West Point reverse proof. And 2019 was the first ever Lincoln Sense with the West Point Mint Mark on them. That's important because here is exactly the same coin, exactly the same grade for $445. 445. And I got to tell you this, if you didn't get one of these, when you call up, if everybody else stampeded before you and beat you to the coin, you better look around because at $450 a year from now, you're going to be kicking yourself because this coin is the one everybody wants. That's why right now you can find them. Look at that, folks, $450, $450. Now, I want you to notice something really important about that. Buy it now, add it to your cart, or go away, right? Don't make an offer, right? The, it's a firm price of four. There's no negotiating, none. That's it. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I can tell you right now, I'm getting a little bragging, right? We know where to buy the highest grade, how to negotiate the best deal, and how to bring that to the show for $129. There's no other way to say it. Just simply beat everybody else to the punch. And at $129, you're not getting lesser grades. You're not getting a fly-by-night grading service. You're not getting somebody you never heard of before. You are getting the prime example in the highest grade with an autograph from the designer of the reverse of the coin. And let's talk about that. In 1909, when the Lincoln penny was first released, it had what was known as the wheat back reverse. And we, we coin collectors call them wheaties. 
That lasted all the way from 1909 to 1958. 1959, to honor the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's birth, a new reverse was designed for the Lincoln Cent, and it featured the Lincoln Memorial. Naturally, right? That design was in place from 1959 all the way to 2008. Now, 2008 was the last of the memorial backs, and then 2009 was a, a anniversary year again. It was the 200th anniversary of Lincoln's birth, so there were four different reverses, but that was a one-year deal. Beginning in 2010, Lindell Bass designed what has become the quintessential Lincoln Penny reverse, the shield reverse. Now, for those of you who don't know, the shield, the design was taken from the buttons of the Union Army soldiers, of the Union Army uniform. The shield represented Lincoln's successful attempt, successful piloting of the nation through the Civil War. The Union must prevail at all costs was Lincoln's obvious thought when he became president. And that reverse represents his successful attempts to keep the Union united. Lindell Bass added the ribbon with the denomination one cent. But it's so bold, a reverse, it takes up almost all the coin that instantly it has become the new forever reverse of the Lincoln cent. And Lindell Bass has autographed each and every label. And that's great, but let me tell you, the best part about this coin, ladies and gentlemen, the only time ever that West Point has struck a Lincoln cent in reverse proof with that great W mint mark, and you can see on the label, first W reverse proof cent in the highest grade attainable, $129. You know, I have all these other charts and I have all this other great stuff, but really, when it comes down to it, I think this distills, this distills it right down to the simplest terms. 0.7% of the mintage of the 2019 West Point Struck Reverse Proof Lincoln Cent is grading in a perfect proof 70 grade. Not even 1%. It's a scarce coin to begin with, Every single one of these coins originally went with the silver proof set to a collector. They're all in the hands of collectors today. It is extremely difficult to come up with a deal like this. This is a deal that we set about bringing to the network early. This is not something that was just put together yesterday. It's just not ever gonna happen. Each and every one of these coins was acquired from a mini hoard. Five here, three there, 10, 12. There's no great amount of these coins anywhere. What you see right there is the accumulation, the searching for this specific grade, specific label, and there's a big difference between $129 and 450 bucks. And in order to be able to accomplish that with the same grading service, with the same autograph label, with the same grade and be able to bring this to, to the network at $129, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of toil, a lot of hard work that goes into bringing this rare coin, this once in a lifetime Lincoln penny to Rare Collectibles TV. All right, I gotta go, but let me leave you with this one thought. Do not wait on these coins. You saw some great coins dating back to, to 1970, well, actually, dating back to 1955. But there were coins in there, 1982, 1971. You would be surprised. You would think that you would be able to walk into any coin shop, pick up the phone, or look anywhere and be able to get these anytime. Nope. The same thing. I know it. I, I've been around long enough to see it happen every decade. These coins are here now. They'll be gone tomorrow. But I'll be back, so I want to thank you all for watching and invite you to stay tuned and keep on collecting.
This is Sarah. Sarah is smart. She stays connected with Rick's U.S. Coin Show because she signed up for our weekly email update. She gets the latest info on Rick's picks, Jack's coin suggestions, videos, numismatic fun facts, and more. So go to rarecollectiblestv.com and sign up for our weekly email update. There's no obligation, and you can opt out at any time. Be smart. Be like Sarah. Go to rarecollectiblestv.com and sign up now. The following is a paid presentation furnished by Rare Collectibles TV, LLC. After an unexpected hiatus,